it is uh, Friday, the 25th of February. It's just gone 7 p.m. And this is episode 99. I should have put a chocolate flake in the top of my my hair there. That's one for the UK kids. Um, it's episode 99. Uh, well, we're getting to uh, the significant numbers soon. Uh, welcome uh, to everyone if you're watching live. If you're watching on Catch Up, thank you for coming back and seeing us. If you're watching us on repeat, I can't believe that you could stand us twice in succession but uh, thank you for coming along and uh, we've got a great show for you today uh, we've got a very special guest uh, of whom the first half of the show is going to be completely dedicated to so if you have any questions for our guest then do throw them into the chat try and put a big capital Q in front of it so Ben can see it and you'll chuck it in the pot and then we'll pick them out one by one um, so thanks for that um, before we uh, meet our co-hosts and guests let me just remind you that you can please like subscribe and share that does us a world of good um, our, our numbers are going up very slowly but they're going up uh, which is always good to see and if you want to keep us on the air um, then you can of course donate to us you can do that via PayPal there's the link just down in the bottom it's also in the description and of course you can use YouTube's uh, super chat super sticker type things uh, all donations gratefully received and all go to uh, the running of the show and keeping us on air and uh, there may be a, an occasional pint of beer, maybe, when, when Ben and I get to meet up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Of course, if you want to follow us on social media, we are across all of those channels, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. The handle is exactly the same wherever you go, at ProSynth Network. Give us a follow, give us a like, give us a share. We really appreciate your support in that regard. Um, so that's all of that stuff out of the way. First of all, before we come to our guest, let's um, bring in uh, our esteemed leader, uh, Mr. Benjamin Simpson, up there in the north of England, how are you with your new order power corruption and lies shirt? Very nice. Uh, yeah, I've been um, got an audio book, a Peter Rook audio oh, book yes. thing, and it's him narrating it. So it's just like it's sending me back to our, our good like Joy Division and New Order were, oh, yeah. and I'm, I'm having a bit of a reappreciation of those. Yes, uh, well, I'm also. Words. A little bit in shock after last week, you know, when your power went off and left yeah, me. Yeah, I was going to come to that. Yeah, God, well, that was mate, a bit... you did a sterling job, I have to say. <laughs> it was a bit no, really? scary. Yeah, and no, then no. also just before we went on air tonight, my mic stand fell off. My new <laughs> mic stand, and like did me in the shoulder. Here, so I think I've got a broken <laughs> collarbone. Um, oh dear. I'll battle on though. It'll be all right. Yes. Yeah. You had sterling uh, effort. Sterling. And uh, before you before you move on to the other co-host, I just wanted to point this out. Um, there it is. I don't know if you can see this. I recently got, um, oh, wait, which way have I got me? That <laughs> Arturia thingy majig. Key Lab 88. Key Lab 88. Yeah. And and it comes with these, like, overlays, you know. Oh, for yes. The, and the, I thought, it's a really, really good idea, that. And then I use Cubase, so I, I got my Cubase overlay out. Mm hmm And that might look fine to you, but what I find really odd is that's what's actually printed on the case below the button. <laughs> so you've got an overlay that does exactly the same thing that's written on the machine itself. I don't. And all it does is it just remind you what application you're using. Just yeah. The top. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well done, Arturia. Big claps. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Fantastic use of your uh, your resources there. Um, welcome and uh, good to have you, mate. And yeah, sterling job last week. Um, <laughs> Just for, for those of you that weren't aware, so last week um, the UK suffered um, what uh, one of our friends in Nashville says is a Tennessee Tuesday. We, we had lots of wind, but of course we're not set up to cope with that. And what happened was the, the storm was going on outside, but my power stayed on, but it knocked out the telephone exchange where the internet comes from. And so, literally, I just lost all my internet. And so I was then on to 4G. I was trying to join the, the show through my phone. And, of course, every everyone else in the area is trying to get their internet through 4G, so it just wasn't working. So Ben took over um, seamlessly, I, I must add, seamlessly, <laughs> and carried the show on to the end. And so I apologise uh, for running out on you, and I apologise to Adam. I've spoken to Adam since. Um, oh. And, yeah, well done. Uh, no worries. Stuff. Um, and, of course, helping him that evening was uh, this guy who is he's part of the furniture now, Mr. Kent Spong. Yes. In, in glorious high definition-ish. You kind of yes. went a bit fuzzy there, but you've got a new camera, apparently. Yeah, yeah I've got a new camera. I'm still here from last night. <laughs> this morning, you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not been that long. 
yesterday yeah. or something. Yeah, something, one of those. Because if you weren't already aware, uh, Kent has his little soirees on a, on a Thursday evening where mm. people like myself just sit in there for six hours and talk bollocks basically <laughs> yeah. yeah and get and get into all sorts of trouble um but yeah you've got a new toy i have yes go on give us a, give us a little noodle on the hydrosynth deluxe give us a couple of chords all right chords Very good, very good. We'll have more of that later on. And I also see there's some glowing lights on a certain um, CS80. So maybe we might get some... Uh, bit of a comparison. Bit of a comparison. Ooh, that'd be good. Ooh, yeah, stay nice. tuned for that one. Nice. Yeah. Stay tuned for that one. Well, um, thanks, Kent, for dropping in. And I do believe this is, according to you, you said this is going to be the first time that you and our guests have been on a, sh a show together. Would that be correct? Yes. Yes. Actually, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Sound a well, bit more enthusiastic. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm just at a blank there. Just, what, what's he talking about? <laughs> well, yeah. you're the one that said to me last yesterday. Yeah, I know. It's first the first time. time we've been. Yeah, it's the first time we've been on a show together. We've done just about everything else together. Oh. Well, <laughs> well yeah. let's ask him. Let's welcome our very special guest. Of course, it is Mr. Dave Spears of G4 Software. Yeah. Welcome, sir. Welcome back. Good to have you aboard again. Thank you, man. Thanks. Congratulations on your um, your release of OBE version 2 and the Bright Sparks addendum, which is what I'm calling it. I don't know if that's what you're calling it, but um, the Tom Oberheim video. And, of course, before that, just shortly before that, uh, Mtron Mark 2. Well, yeah. It's been a busy few weeks for you. Yeah. Yeah, madness. <laughs> madness. Yeah. It, it was funny because just before coming on, I was like, when did we release OBE V2? I was like, oh, it was only Tuesday, <laughs> it was but Tuesday. it feels like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, so it's, it's been busy. I, 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 can you put your feet up yet? Uh, I'm going to take a day off next week. Yay. <laughs> Just Which the one. I think it's my first day off since about 2019. Wow. Uh, but yeah, me and my dad are going to the de Havilland Mosquito Museum. Oh, very nice. Where's that? Uh, I can't tell you. I wish I oh. could, actually. It's somewhere sort of Milton Keynesy way. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, but yeah, very cool. Excellent stuff. Well, we've got Dave here um, for about an hour before he has to go off and do more work. So we're going to make the most of this first hour to talk about all things um, related to what GeForce have been doing in the last uh, couple of weeks, really, I guess. Because Mtron Mark II was, what, two weeks ago? Three weeks, maybe? Probably, yeah. Yeah, it's, something yeah, like that. It's all, all kind uh, of blurs, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. But... Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, um, let's let's just talk. Well, let's let's do this in because I think this is is pretty special. Um, certainly is for you, and I know it is for the rest of us. But um, of course, on Tuesday, OBE version two was released, and it comes with a whole slew of extra new things. But most of all, at last, the PC people have been appeased, and there is a version for them. But the I think probably the the coolest thing about this is the fact that on it you have now. Um, this wonderful badge um, and let's just let's just play a little clip of this uh, this video here great minds make great stuff and and whether it's digital or analog those are just the tools so I think you've done a great job well I've thought about uh, analog simulation for a while and I had my I've had my opinions on it for a while and I've heard different uh, attempts at it and um, my attitude was pretty much uh, the ones I'd heard up to that point I, not, I, I felt were not really ready and uh, then out of nowhere sort of and here's on uh, this OBE and um, first of all I listened to the stuff and I was pretty amazed as I loved the the uh, unison uh, adventure you did and uh, then Marcus and I got talking about it. I was really impressed. I, I, I have used a lot of different plugins and they're really, there's many great tools out there, but as far as the ones that have claimed to sound like Oberheim, um, they've, they've not quite had the, had the sound I was looking for. Um, so the, the OBE was really the first time that 
it, it felt to me like this is this is something that's that really rivals the uh the good old analog stuff so so there you go that is um tom oberheim of course himself um and marcus uh ryle i have to make sure because I, I think i actually build him as marcus lyle in the in the notes to start with so i apologize marcus but i've got your name right that must be one of the best feelings in the world to to have them endorse your product like that it's mental I, every time i see that i get goosebumps i it's, you know i've seen it like about a thousand times <laughs> yeah but there are times where i'm kind of like you know a bit bit grumpy and i'm like i'll just put that on again <laughs> and watch it <laughs> and have a stroke um no it's 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 sort of mind-blowing this last year because i think i came on shortly after release of obe originally yeah, didn't that's I? right yeah what was funny is obviously we were already in discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's a brilliant story because I, I, I hope I'm not talking out of turn here, but what happened was I think it was a couple of nights. I'd done that teaser video, which I was like, no one's going to get to the end of that 14-minute teaser video with me <laughs> pretending to do it on the hardware. And somehow somebody broke the space-time continuum because it only took seven minutes before somebody went, hang on, it's software at the end. Uh, they'd obviously just skip right to the end, but um, and quite rightly so, because I was like, no one's going to watch this. Uh, <laughs> but what happened was Marcus, I think it had been brought to Marcus's attention, and he contacted me saying, can we talk? Mm. Uh, and I was like, Look, Marcus is amazing. I mean, you know, obviously we make reference to his work with Oberheim, but he is responsible for things like ADAT, Quadroverb, yeah, uh, HR sixteen. Uh, I think even the SR sixty. I mean, his lineage is just amazing. Mm. So obviously, I was like, no, I don't want to talk to you. No, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can we talk? Can we talk? Uh, and he had it had been brought to his attention. He had listened to it, and I believe what happened is that he had driven straight to Tom's. Mm. I think Tom had had his first or second jab it was all chaos at that time mm. and Marcus was kind of they were all masked up standing on the drive and Marcus was kind of playing it to him on the laptop and Tom went wow you know I need to check this out and yeah it all kind of started from there mm. and went kind of crazy I mean honestly so many occasions where I've been on zooms with them and I'm just like, why are they even listening to me? You know, uh, but they had a couple of really, really good points, and they were, you know, obviously we would like to get involved, and but they had some recommendations that they said, you know, it'd be really good if you could implement this in this kind of way. Okay. So yeah, we yeah we worked towards that, and yeah, it it happened. So that that input that you got from them is what we're seeing in in, in version two, yeah. Yeah, in particularly, I mean, we've called it the vintage knob, uh, but mm, it's yeah. essentially the calibration knob. What it is is that no SEMs are identical. Yeah. Uh, and while we had the detune, which also kind of changed a couple of other factors, I mean, I loved it, but it was quite unwieldy. And what it is is that when you when you kind of move that, the changes for the respective SEMs didn't necessarily stay with those SEMs. So this was a right. way of making sure that each of the kind of decalibration was specific to certain sets mm. and remain that way you know regardless of which mode you were in so if yeah. you're in mono mode obviously it would only trigger the same one if it was in the kind of um what do they call it the cycle mode yeah. continuous mode then you would hear those differences and it's and 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 it's it's very subtle uh but it does make a difference yeah no it absolutely does um so let's can we just go back to the the bright sparks thing because you made this fantastic film and if it, if you haven't seen it see it because it's there on youtube it's completely free of charge to go and watch and it's all these little episodes and the great music from my monster as well but you wanted to interview tom for that but things didn't work out so you know how did how did it you know how did you go from that to, to actually kind of getting him uh, for this for this extra like addendum to the the movie i'd approached tom at the time we were doing bright sparks obviously he's on the west coast mm. i wanted don buckler and obviously you know chowning ross and you know all of the kind of key guys and i was like we could go out for kind of four or five days and just try and organize these back-to-backs 
Uh, but we started to kind of eat our way through. I mean, it was funded by Chris and myself. So we started mm. to kind of eat our way through the budget. And when Don uh, was super ill, we were kind of like, can we really justify flying out there? And actually, I had spoken because Tom had uh, met Mark Doty. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Mark was a brilliant inspiration. Mark was kind of, kind of Mark were my foils when creating mm-hmm. Bright Sparks. It was like, do I leave this in or do I edit it <laughs> out? Uh, and Mark and I were completely geeking out on a load of history stuff as it was uncovered. But I asked Mark if he would do it. Uh, and then I think that was about the time that he moved. So nothing ever kind of really dovetailed together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, Tom didn't really know me from a hole in the road i i think i had spoken to him that's yeah I'd, I'd approached him then i'd had a couple of nice responses but he's not you know he's not a digital native he's 80 something years old now yeah. and uh, he doesn't spend his time on the internet he does far more productive things and yeah we just couldn't tie it in so obviously when we got into discussions about obe i was like can we just do this? Can Mm. we do this now? And he was incredibly receptive. I mean, brilliant. And I'd sent him a load of questions in advance. So he was well prepped. Uh, And he'd obviously written a load of stuff down. So obviously, because it was COVID, you know, we couldn't go out. And uh, it's funny, because when I did the, I've told this story a million times, so stop me if I'm boring anybody. But I've got a friend, a very good friend who does a lot of TV edits. Right. Uh, colorist and stuff and he'd helped me at the beginning of bright sparks and he said look you know i can get this on sky arts but you have to do that kind of you know coming up next and the recap and he said it basically equates that's the only way you're going to get shit on tv now mm. uh and it equates to six minutes of information per quarter hour and i was like i can't i cannot condense somebody's life story down to six minutes when they've taken the time to kind of sit with me and uh talk to me about their life it just felt really, it felt wrong. So I was kind of like, I'm going to do it my way. And it's going to be like since Britannia in a long form. <laughs> and then we met after probably six months after Bright Sparks had been released. And he was like, because obviously initially we charged as a download for it. Uh, and he was like, and you got the album as part of that package. Yeah. And he was like, uh, so how did it work? And I was like, well, it was a critical success. And he was like, no, what you mean? <laughs> so this time I said to him, look, would you do the edit? It kind of felt fair and he's such a good editor that I really wanted to see what he did. So I begged him for super mates rates uh, and he's a very old friend and I do owe him, but he injected huge. What's great is Tom is actually pretty mischievous. (laughs) I'm naturally mischievous. Jeff, the editor is mischievous. I've done a lot of corporate video shoots in the old days with him where, you Mm. know, we get up to a bit of mischief just to kind of kill the boredom alleviate the boredom and uh yeah so when he put in things like the lambretta bit yeah (laughs) and all of that stock footage i was like this just elevates it for me and and the first time he played me uh, i think it was like the first 12 minutes i did everything from kind of almost you know cry in a great in a good way to i punched the air about five times i laughed it had all the emotions in it for me and i was like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there is there anyone else? Um, you, know, you mentioned some some names there that didn't make it into the the movie for whatever reason. Is there anybody else that you're gonna or you you would like to do this kind of thing with? You know, like a half hour extra bonus feature. Yeah, I've always seen it. I mean, in my, in my head, it's always been this. Obviously, I Monster started the project. It was them who came to us saying, we're going to do this album mm. dedicated to eight pioneers. So I'm eternally grateful that they gave us the opportunity to do what we did. But I'd always seen it as a kind of ever-evolving thing. I mean, it was mm-hmm. really in conversation with Mark Doty that Mark at one point said, you know, this is a really important historic document. Yeah. Particularly with Alan uh you know, who really hadn't spoken much beforehand. There's the NAM oral history, which is great. Yeah. Uh, so I've always wanted to kind of see it evolve, but, you know, it, it's time. Yeah. There's mountains of people. I think I would really, really like to... Um, actually, oh, that's funny. I see Ken Flux Pierce. <laughs> so I would really like to do a long-form one with Marcus, but Ken 
has done a really superb interview with Marcus. Mm. Uh, I thoroughly recommend because, you know, Marcus is a legend. He is just, yeah. you know, what he's been responsible for is amazing. But, you know, for me, it would be people like, obviously, Roger Lynn, uh, Chowning, Dave Smith, Dave Rossum. Uh, there's so many. And actually, at one point, we talked about kind of European people. Mm. But I think since Bright Sparks has happened and people have realised there's an appetite for this, uh, other people have, have done similar things. Mm. So it becomes kind of like, do you know, do we do more of the same? Or, And that's where I think the Tom thing was really cool. Uh, I think I think his humour and his mischief comes across. Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's Definitely. so much of his character that's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to continue, but yeah, it's it's yeah. time and time and I guess money in a way. Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. Yeah, these things aren't cheap. Um, guys, have you got any questions you want to ask? Um, not necessarily about. The, we'll talk about the instrument in a minute, but anything you guys want to talk about the film, the clips, or anything like that before we move on? I, I just wanted to uh, thank thank Dave really for for making it because it was really enjoyable. Uh, Tom comes across as just such a nice really nice guy you know and you 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 kind of rooting for him and uh, and the, the moment when you find out that it, it was all the uh, name rights were restored to him and that it, it's just like it's a feel-good little yeah yeah, yeah. Of, yeah yeah it's a feel-good thing and thanks for making it you know i think these things need to these people need to be recorded and yeah uh, and mm. uh, what's apparent in this one is just how important Roger Lynn is has been in everything, you know. We, we really need to add Roger Lynn onto it if possible because totally, yeah, yeah. very important. That's the thing with the American pioneers, shall we call them? They've all had a little hand in each other's, you know, development. Whether it's just a, a little g up or a bit of, you know, technical mm. expertise. You know, Rossum, Smith, Lynn. Oberheim, they've all kind of had a little hand in each other's, you know, success, which I think is really cool. It's really interesting. Again, you know, talking to Marcus, uh, he talks about, you know, Doug Curtis and uh, Tom were working very, mm. very closely together on things like, you know, OBXA, and I and I believe that, you know, certain chips were designed and developed to meet the needs of what right. you know people like Tom wanted. So I really like that. In fact, I didn't put it in, but he. Uh, tells a story of when they were doing the they would they wanted to do the dmx and it's marcus's hand claps that are on the dmx i mean that oh, wow. that is one <laughs> hell of a claim to fame isn't it um <laughs> yeah but they had you know they obviously roger and tom were mates and roger went down to see what they would do. in fact i think they were talking about doing the dmx and they said to roger you know do you want to would you be interested in doing it for us and I believe Roger kind of was like, no, I'm kind of happy doing my own, with my own little <laughs> thing over here. And they were like, well, do you mind if we kind of have a go? And they were like, no, no, no. Mm. So there was this real spirit of cooperation. Yeah. And that for me kind of translated because in the early days of the VST stuff, there was a very, very similar kind of spirit. Mm. But obviously the industry sort of matures and people start retreating into their enclaves and yeah. Uh, you kind of bump into these people later and go, oh, they were really interesting days because we were all kind of discussing and it was just new and fresh. And Marcus mm -hmm. made a really good analogy in that it was kind of like the uh, bands where record labels were there, but they were largely hands off. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of the same for uh, designers. You know, it was like, I mean, as, as uh, Marcus says, you know, he was 19 when yeah. he started on the, DSX and I love that bit where he's like mm. I was out of my depth you know? <laughs> there, were, there, there was times where I just thought I might have to just not turn up for work today <laughs> but it's that idea and actually that's been really brilliant when I've kind of played certain sections to the guys here you know, we've got some youngsters who have really re-energized us and it's like mm. you just need to kind of do it I keep yeah. I, I use this phrase all the time you know just do it, get through it and do it. And then you take that knowledge, uh, but you have to be surrounded by kind of people who uh, inspire you. Mm. And I, well, I know that's why, you know, Marcus has said that the industry has been very good to him. He's obviously done very well. Uh, 
I didn't know until uh, watching Ken Flux Pierce's documentary that it appears that Marcus and his company, which then I think was Fast Forward Designs, they had they had a royalty on everything because it encouraged them to make the best instrument that they could. Mm. And he just I mean, when he came to me with the idea of working with Tom, uh, I was it. I took a little bit of persuading. But he said a couple of things and when he said about, you know, the industry has been really good to him and whatnot. And he said, because Tom gave me my break when I was 19 and pause karma. And I was like, wow, because mm. obviously Marcus was very influential in Tom getting his name back. Yeah, absolutely. And then we had a Zoom meeting where it was Marcus, uh, his partner, Susan Wolf, who's a very integral part of his company and Tom and Tom's wife. And that was it. That cemented it for me because we just laughed and got on. <laughs> and it was like, it's, this is so not corporate. You know, this feels like a nice little family. Yeah. And it worked. And also I love, I love seeing the dynamics between partners. Obviously, Marcus and Susan are equal partners in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have noticed over the years, particularly with Bright Sparks, is that, you know, engineers are very driven they have to I, I kind of work that way i can't multitask i like i do this until mm -hmm. i finished it and then i put it away and everything around me kind of falls apart and thankfully my wife kind of takes care of the house <laughs> and the shopping yeah. feeds me and brings me sandwiches at lunchtime <laughs> which i'm eternally grateful for but i so i'm always looking for that dynamic i saw it with alan and buena and mm -hmm. it was a very heartwarming thing and I, as soon as I saw it with uh, Tom and his wife Jill, I was like, "Yeah, the, yeah, this, it just feels right to me." It's very much, you know, like Chris Huggett and his wife Melanie, yeah. similar kind of thing. You know, they they kind of protect mm. their man, and he does these mad things. Yeah, well, there's, what's the saying? Behind every great man, there's a great woman. And, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. However, I have seen on the other side of the industry, you know, working with artists, that that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes <laughs> you're like, why are you with her? Because she's basically just living the high life by proxy. <laughs> so, yeah, it can go either way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why I'm always looking for it. Yeah. I um, just want to quickly give a shout out to Andy Synthadic. Thank you very much for your donation. Uh, he says, uh, great show. Thanks today for all the great instruments, stories and laughs. And also to Adam, who was on the show last week, uh, talking about his Advantage synthesizers. Um, thank you for your donation. It's uh, absolutely fantastic and uh, very much appreciated. Right. Let's talk because we've, we've got about half an hour left with it. Um, so let's talk about the instrument itself yes. so this is it oberheim obe has just been upgraded to version two um that brings a, a slew of new features uh it also brings of course for the pc uh users amongst us it brings uh pc functionality which um famously wasn't there at the start but um you know you explained why and you've come through and um you know i've been very fortunate to have messed around with both versions and even on a VM uh, that I've got running on my Mac with shared resources and stuff, it works brilliantly. And it's, it's, there's no difference. Um, it's just an <laughs> exceptional instrument. Um, so tell us about what, I mean, obviously you've, got, you've now got Tom's endorsement on there. So you, the name is everywhere and the logo, as you can see, is on uh, all, all the SEMs. It's, it, just, it looks the part now even more so. But tell us about the the extra things that we can uh, now get in in version two because there's there's a whole bunch of new presets. Obviously, you've talked about the the vintage uh, and the detune knob, but there's also a drum mode in there as well and uh, a few other bits. Yeah, we had the idea for the drum mode actually a while ago, and it was like you know if you assign a key to a specific sem. And because we've got the kind of FM modulation stuff in there, it mm. was like, we were coming up with these kind of mad drum pants and uh, Hugo is obviously the kind of brains behind it. Played me a couple of drum and bass things and I was like, dude, this is really, really cool. Uh, so that was that was a must, mm. uh, a relatively simple thing to implement. Uh, other stuff, oh, there's a zoom mode on the sequencer thing, which makes oh, it yes, a yeah. bit better oh, and also uh, the, the actual zoom mode on the instrument itself is just now grab the corner and and it 
dynamically expands yeah. without having to set something and then restart it. So that's really yeah. cool. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I think the uh, reverb's really nice that you've added. Oh, oh the yes. reverb's yeah. beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's really better than beautiful. some standalone reverbs, are. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have to give a big shout out to, actually, it's very pertinent at the minute. Uh, we, the, uh, he's, Artemy is his name, but he's in Ukraine. Mm. Right. Uh, and there's every possibility that he may have stopped being a Cody yesterday and be mm. fighting today. So we were yeah. kind of trying to wrap our heads around that. Wow. But yeah, it does amazing, amazing work. And yeah, we, we, we were kind of working through a couple of options and I was like, this, this just sounds <laughs> lush. And I, I, of course, when I did the version two patches in the other alpha patch folder, I completely overcooked the reverb, but it was kind of intentional. <laughs> Tell us about the, the, the opening patch, because Kent and I have been having a little debate, because Kent really liked the opening patch on version 1. I really like, I mean, I liked it, but I really like the, the opening patch on version 2, which is called Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. What What's the story behind that patch? Uh, so when I did the original 8 Voice video, like 11 years ago or something, Obviously, I did everything on the fly, and I did. It wasn't even an HD camera. I think I had a. I had a nice three three CCD camera, but and widescreen. But the definition was a bit grainy, uh, and I don't like. It. I just kind of do it and then go. Oh, how am I going to fix that? Anyway, every, all the sounds were done on the fly. But there's a point where I do this unison sound, and I still get emails about it today, going, "How did you make that sound?" and can you recreate it and blah 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 and I was like well it was kind of done and then forgotten about and it became known as the sound of God uh, <laughs> and I still get emails from people going that sound of God it's amazing um, and what we did was I tried to recreate that for this uh, and it's not exact in fact I pulled out the old uh, DV cam tape and I, I had it blown up and I was trying to but you can't see any of the definition of where the knobs are so I was trying to do this one to one in fact Hugo started it and it became this kind of to it and fro between yeah yeah but you know you can hear that little square wave and it's not quite and anyway uh, so the idea was to do this kind of separate section of alpha patches uh, with the V2 sounds which obviously include the reverb and stuff yeah and i had a conversation with tom uh i i was in i was talking with tom it was either the night before or a couple of nights before the documentary went out and i was giving him the benefit of my non-wisdom game don't look at the forums no um <laughs> and i just said to him you know it was a really it was a moment for me because I said, look, you know, the last year has just been, I mean, I'm just an idiot who, you know, used to go and play synths in stores and dream of owning one. I, you know, I put a similar kind of thing on the beta group and to have this happen in the last year has just been, it's been a dream come true. And I just, you know, I'm good at a flippant remark. And just at the end of the conversation, I said, you know, I really feel like I've been standing on the shoulders of giants this last mm. year. And thank you. And I walked away and I was like, I need to change the name of that patch because it was called Sound of God. And I thought, we're bound to upset somebody, <laughs> as we do. And I came back in and changed the name to it. And it's purely selfish reasons because... I just thought every time I fire that instrument up in the future, I'm going to see that patch name and I'm going to see that Oberheim name and I'll remember this yeah. mad journey, really. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's how it came about. I mean, it's, it is a lovely sound. If anybody hasn't heard this, I mean, it's on the most of the demos, but... It is. I can see why the sound of God, you know, came into some of these... It's just, stuff and the old cook reverb <laughs> yeah still going it's still going yeah Love um we, we've got a few questions in the chat um and i want to get these in before we just kind of talk about a few other things and then have to let you go uh ken flux pierce has a question for you can you tell us a bit about the technology behind the filters he's just curious about some of the details in there uh, i know nothing about coding ken <laughs> i know honestly i don't uh, all I can tell you is that there was a mammoth amount of toing and froing with myself and Hugo 
we had obviously the eight voice and we had a new SM. So I'm just looking at down there. And we were, it was constant, constant scoping and comp comparison. And then there was a moment where it kind of, it, it just came together. And then there were a couple of lumps in it and it was like, okay, let's see if we can sort those out. Uh, but I can't, I can't tell you about anything technical. I'm afraid. Mm. He, I he goes I'm, the the brains behind this again. You know this update and and the PC version. Yeah. Uh, actually, Hugo was reasonably hands off with this. He's okay. so Hugo's been on this kind of super secret project that we've been on for so long. And <laughs> yes. That's his baby. But right. what we've got is uh, we've got uh, there's a couple of guys. We put a couple of guys on it basically, and mm -hmm. they are just awesome yeah they're young they it, it was funny actually because there was a moment uh, probably a week or so ago that i mean they're busy now doing something else and it was like you know really we don't want to burn these people out because coders think they can work on this level they can sustain this output yeah mm. and they can't uh so when you kind of go how long will this take and they go three months we know that that you know with 20 years worth of experience we know that's a lie <laughs> but it's not a deliberate lie it's just that they think they can sustain the output and they can't and we were a bit concerned chris and i had a discussion you know like we've really got to be careful because whilst they're amazingly enthusiastic we do not want to burn anybody out but then i had a bit of a kind of weird epiphany and i was like look i'm 58 man i remember being 23 and all i wanted was an opportunity and yeah. I would work 24 seven. And we all, I'm sure we all had those days in studios where you could do a 48 hour stint yeah, and still be reasonably fresh, you know, like three days later. <laughs> now I'm, that's just not me. Yeah. So I think we kind of had to put things into perspective, but they are really, really cool. I mean, I, I think I said last time, you know, we've been growing the team. Yes. Yeah. That's just, uh, Again, I'm kind of, you know, in meetings with them. I'm like, why are they even listening to me? <laughs> why are they asking my advice? <laughs> Jesus, you've forgotten everything. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah. Um, another question from Icing the Body Electric. I'd love to know what your real name is. Um, total noob, dumbass question. As this would be the first soft synth that he's ever bought. How does Ooh. portability protection work if I need to move OBE to a different PC? So you work off a license code you buy the item the license code is on your account when you fire up the the instrument for the first time it asks you for that code and you put it in what what are the the caveats around that you know can you install it on multiple machines with that license or is there limits yeah. or what yeah i mean you can install it on multiple pcs that, that I, I think the only uh, and it's not hard and fast rule but you know we we tend to kind of we can't we don't like supporting every single pc you've got sure and everything you've got you know it's kind of like you know just be cool about it uh mm -hmm. but generally now uh, i mean the pc thing is is it's a pain in the ass frankly because <laughs> of the variables you know with yeah. mac you're mm -hmm. dealing with this kind of everything's in the kind of ecosystem and you can do it with mac or with the pc stuff there's so many external things i mean we had somebody the other day i was amazed at the lack of support uh which our support guide said you know actually there's not a lot coming through we were like have we sold any um <laughs> but actually there was one guy with this you know mvc ldll thing that wasn't coming up right uh, and that was simply because his pc didn't have that installed as part of whatever the package is right so it's an easy thing to sort out but no uh no i mean you know our philosophy is if you paid your money, you can put it on all the PCs you got or all the Macs you got. Yeah. Great. No. Another question from Ronald Wilde. Um, loves the OBE. Have you or anybody in the chat room had good experience with using MIDI hardware controllers, which fits best to the SEM design? That's going to be quite a difficult one, isn't it? Yeah. I uh, Honestly, I haven't. Uh, the student, my, my room here, this isn't the main studio, this is kind of my room, is always in a permanent state of flux. So, mm. you know, I'll set something up, test it, and then it's dismantled, you know, a couple right. of days later because I, there's something else needs to be tested or gone through. So I'm sorry, I have really very limited experience on that. I mean, the thing I use is the Novation SL thing. Yeah. So yeah I it's guess it's you... nice, but it's not that. I know exactly what it means. It's not, you know, it's that one to one. 
mean, you could go down that really expensive route. I, can't, I forget the name now, but the I know Christian at uh, Spitfire uses them a lot. These little oh, blocks no, that you can, yeah. yeah, you can kind of construct your own mm. controller, but it's you know they're they're not cheap. Um, but I guess I suppose if you you could get yourself a, a generic MIDI controller and then just assign. Uh, everything to to what you know where you feel most comfortable i guess yeah once you kind of learn that it's not muscle memory but it kind of is once you learn mm. it it becomes quite intuitive but it's that initial you know because the position of that slide or that knob isn't directly related to the position on we're, we're, um, kent knows this only too well we've talked about it for years <laughs> <laughs> um there was another question from Ken. He's getting his money's worth here today. Um, with the idea of making each SEM have its uh, own calibration, does this pertain to more parameters than what is available to adjust on the front panel? Uh, yes. Ah. I can't tell you exactly what that is because <laughs> it's like magic to me. Uh, but, yes, there are a few things that go on uh, under the hood. Okay. Uh, that was a really interesting because there was a lot of toing and froing between us and Tom and Marcus. So that was the thing that they really needed to sign off on and feel comfortable that we'd mm. done correctly. It took a while to hone in on it, I have to say. Uh, but that's the cool thing about, you know, and actually that's, you know, Hugo kind of took care of that because right. he could understand what they were saying when they were talking in <laughs> technical terms. <laughs> Um, there's a question here from Wilden's Music, and I'm, I was just trying to sort of read it and decipher it. So I'm guessing uh, it says here, how, how does Dave and GeForce deal with the end users, such as interfaces, DAX, amp, speaker combinations, when it comes to designing virtual analog oscillators? And I'm guessing this is about the considerations you have to make when designing, you know, software oscillators in respect of all the different variations of equipment and you know what the end user will have so you know i've got a scarlet somebody else will have an rme somebody else will have something you know very cheap and cheerful so does that play into your considerations that you're you're making something that will work well on all things or does it not even come into consideration not really i mean the main thing is the instrument scope the shit out of the instrument that's yeah. that's the key you know if you, if you the more measurements you take the more accurate it's going to be uh what is really fascinating is when you start putting it through different dax because things do color things although i think one of the interesting things now is really we don't have crap dax anymore True. Whereas there was a period where it was mm. like, Jesus, do they really think that that's acceptable? What's mm. also fascinating is that some of that has become eminently desirable, you know, like 20 yeah. years later, a 12 bit DAG. Yeah. Uh, but no, it doesn't really play into it. The main thing with us is the, the instrument. Mm -hmm. The instrument has to be, has to be, which has got to be right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, the only one... way that you could control that really would be making your own audio interface, which could look a bit like a, a sem. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah wow. Because, yeah. I mean, I guess, is it a consideration? Because, you know, lot, there are lots of different audio interfaces, and yes, they're all, they're all pretty good, but some are regarded better than others. And that must have a, you know, that must play a part in the final sound, you know, because I always wonder when you have people say, I've got this instrument, whether, you know, instrument X, and you've got a whole bunch of people saying it sounds amazing. You've got a whole bunch of people saying it sounds awful. What is that difference? Why is it sounding awful? Is it just personal taste? Or is it because maybe they're shoving it through something cheap and nasty? It's stunning. The differences on occasion have been mind-blowing. Uh, we did a lot of... I mean, we do ha we do use good D2A converters and interfaces. I've got the, Apo the UA stuff, the Apollo mm -hmm. stuff. I've got RME stuff. We obviously set everybody up with good gear but then you could take that into one into i mean this room here is kind of strange i lose quite a lot of top end in this room purely because of the placement of the speakers because it's not yeah. a big room but when i go to the main studio it's a very live room so we're constantly kind of doing these comparisons but you need a really well treated room to know that what you're dealing with is good yeah uh, it's fundamentally good but I, I years and years ago i did a i think it was when i was trying to work out whether i wanted the metric halo or the rme or the um, uad and we 
uh, I managed to blag a couple of uh, interfaces and we did some just listening through CDs really okay and the differences was amazing and I sometimes I put that down to kind of a, a specific genre Mm. so i was listening to quite a lot of jazz at the time where you know the cymbals and the hi-hats are kind of all up here and nice and there's air you can kind of hear yeah. the air and then you put up so the metric halo would sound amazing on that and then i'd kind of put it on uh the rme and it was like that's not the same but then i'd take the stevie wonder album you know and really well produced or a blue nile yeah. album again really well produced and it's like i wasn't hearing the same thing a, a lot of it is, is sort of beyond my realms of hearing now i remember when unders were doing the olympics rick had a load of um because i always thought the ante antelope um you know big ben external clock yeah. stuff was kind of snake oil uh and rick had a load of those delivered to the studio for tests before they kind of waded into things mm. and i do remember me going you know how much god taking the piss <laughs> you know blah 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 but he did double blind listening tests and he got every single one right and i was like that's why he's been yeah. really successful. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, some people do have those golden ears. Mine are a little jaded now. Yeah. Um, just very quickly, uh, I mean, we, we've we heard your story a number of times. It's always fascinating to hear it again. But what was the moment, um, Adam wants to know, that you decided you wanted to go into software production? Because you, you, you've been a performer. You've been out on the road with Debbie Harry and, and a whole host of other people. And you kind of got in, you'd been doing documentaries um, and the whole key facts thing, twiddly bits and all that. So what what was that thing that said, yeah, G4 software, that's what we want to do? Uh, it was a couple of things, really. We'd done that Fat Boy MIDI controller. Yeah. Had a mate who could get us into Dixon's and PC World, all the kind of retail channels. But he said, you need a standalone point of sale so that somebody can go up, tweak it, get a noise out of it instead of being a box that doesn't make any sound at all yeah so i had we had a young lad who was very keen but this is such early days i'd, I'd also been to nam and uh it was that vibra coblo 6000 green synth that i think was exclusive to digi design and i'd heard that oh. and thought that's amazing uh and then obviously steinberg brought out a model e and i was like mm. this is really interesting uh so we asked him to design Actually, it's a joke because I basically said, make me a JD800 in software form <laughs> in the year 2000 or 1999 <laughs> or whenever it was. And he's just like, after a while, he's like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Uh, so we decided that as a kind of learning experience, uh, I had all of these Mellotron samples mm -hmm. uh, from when I was doing stuff with Steve Hackett and other people. Uh, and it was like, well, why don't we just start with that? Because we've got no complex pitch shifting or time stretching you know mm. you speed it up the tape plays faster and mm. let's just use that and we made a, we made that we played it to a couple of the old prog rockers and they were like you should sell this mm. and we thought really and we did <laughs> and and it just went mental i mean you know we were yeah. kind of one of the first so yeah uh, and i love the excitement of those days they were really it felt like we could do business in a really different way you know be open and transparent again it never works that way ultimately but there's there's this period again that's why i love the early days of analog because you know a lot of these guys were like i've had this idea and they were punts mm. a lot of them were punts you know i need to create that oscillator that stays in tune or maybe i'll do the patching in this way or maybe so yeah i like that it's men in sheds again isn't it <laughs> yeah um eric ribero wants to know uh, how do we help you keep making more documentaries is there is there a way of helping you? Or have you ever considered Kickstarters, Patreons, that kind of thing? It's funny because Peter Gorgas said to me, I posted something on my personal Facebook page, and uh, Peter Gorgas said, I think you might have missed a trick here. Maybe you should have been. And actually what was funny is because on a couple of occasions, you know, purely financially driven, I had I was contemplating asking other people to go to people's houses and ask them. Actually, it was a friend of mine who said, no, it won't be the same because I know I do know my historic shit. And so I can have a dialogue with them. And I think, you know, once they understand that, actually, I'm really interested in this. I'm not just making a documentary for the sake of it. Mm. Uh, 
I think I said before, you know, with Alan Perlman, I made an error uh, because it was he had Nexus, which was acquired by Teledyne, and I'd got it the wrong way around. But it was the best mistake I could have made because in correcting me, he just went into this flow and I was like, right, sit back, say yeah. nothing, you know, keep nodding. <laughs> and it just, it flowed. So yeah, I'm, uh, Eric, I'm Eric's top dude. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. top dude. Absolutely. Uh, but I don't know is the honest answer. I'd love, I'd love to do more. I had thought, in fact, it's funny because immediately after Bright Sparks, one was out, one of the guys who, the guy had said to me about you need to do it. Uh, he said, he's pretty wealthy and he said, Come on, let's do another one. I'll fund it and let's go to the States. And I, but my head was fried, you know, it was kind of yeah. fried. It was a year's worth of, which is funny because you just, when, you, when you're doing something as big as Bright Sparks, you know, you think you know these people, well, you, you feel you know these people really well. Mm. And then you bump into them kind of six months later. They don't remember you. And I'm like, <laughs> but, 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 like, I but, thought but, we were best mates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um we've only got about five or so minutes left with you so uh quick fire questions quick fire answers do you notice any major difference between the new sem and the sems in the eight voice while you were working on uh obe uh i think i thought i did but i think that was psychological because right. this sem here that we have which is the newer one don't show you the back of my head um <laughs> is really light yeah so there's obviously quite a lot of air in there and i didn't look at it when they dissected it and started probing it whereas those sem modules are quite weighty mm. so i think there was this kind of psychological element at play what i did notice was the calibration was different yeah, yeah. you know I, I i said to hugo at one point with the lf uh, with the lfo the pitch lfo i was like too much is happening too soon i want it really nice and gentle and subtle at the beginning and he was like well i've been working from he'd been working from the sem at that point he's like well you, you need to check it with the sem so we just put the two to, side by side and it was like totally different with the, yeah. with the new sem turn it a little bit and a lot happens yeah very next one uh heathcliff says what is your favorite oberheim synth besides the eight voice sem Oh, we're, 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 <laughs> we argue about this non-stop. Uh, I love the OB-8, which is the baby behind that me. That one there, yeah. It was kind of the first Oberheim that, I, that we got. Mm -hmm. uh, and I sort of fell in love with it. During this, one of the things that I wanted to do with Tom was I wanted to have uh, little sound bites from artists who used the things on seminal albums uh which was quite amusing in itself i had a conversation with tom york uh that was cool but tom was a bit reticent to put his head above the parapet because he said actually i don't know technical things i just kind of everything i've learned i've kind of self it was self-taught uh and he's quite a nervy guy anyway so that was uh an interesting one but uh I had a conversation with the Sting people, which was funny because he was <laughs> he was kind of interested because synchronicity was done on the with the system. Yeah, uh, but he was in rehearsals, I think, for a Vegas residency, so he couldn't do that. I was like, how punk! Um, <laughs> but the guy that I've stayed in touch with, apart from Dave Gamson, who uh, yeah. obviously used Oberheim stuff, is uh, Jimmy Jam. All right, yeah. Now for me. So I got into the Oberheim sound really through Lyle Mays, and that's mm -hmm. why I wanted the eight voice. Lyle's playing is was just sublime, and he's deeply missed. But then I went to a gig. Uh, it was the time, mm -hmm. and it, everything on stage was Oberheim, and I was like, "How can something like that sound like?" I mean, it was just like, for me, it was like all those dives and those riffs so yeah. i've had this really amazing series of conversations with jimmy and jimmy said uh that basically the patch of 1999 and uh fake alexander o'neill and he just reeled off mm. these is preset c5 of the ob8 wow <laughs> now what was interesting from my perspective is so all the coders and stuff love the sems because obviously each sem is different mm -hmm. Then we get into the OBX, which is essentially the same uh, component tree as the SEM. 
but mm. in a much more controllable way, single panel. Uh, uh, the cross mod on that, I, I think, is amazing. And then we get into the OBXA, where we start, we, we still have the eight individual, or four to eight individual voice cards, where you have that variance between them. And then what happened with the OB8, I think it was an attempt to kind of make a, a slightly more affordable product. Mm -hmm. So things like the software and the, portama uh, the portamento and the LFOs were done in software. Now, I know that amongst the analog purists that that's kind of frowned on. <laughs> but the one great thing about the OB8 is every time you turn it on, it works. Mm. And then to have the conversation with Jimmy and you know even with Sting about synchronicity and stuff, that was the instrument that they yeah. gravitated to. So, I think for me, it's quite a special machine. Mm. Excellent. Well, there's there's no more questions, but there are a couple of things I just want to throw up here. Dina is in the chat, and oh, she just hi, wants Dina. to let you know that your work is priceless, invaluable, brilliant, and she's sending big hugs across the ocean. Yeah, big hugs back, Dina. And, I, I, uh, I will. We will talk yes. soon. Um, and Andrew Brooks, who's a regular in all the shows, and he was on Kent's last night, he has just bought OBE. It's his first virtual instrument that he's wow. ever bought, and he hope wow. it bloody works. Well, it, I, yeah. That's cool. It should be. It should be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, before we say goodbye, Kent, Ben, have you got anything you want to put today very quickly? Uh, I'm just like really itching to find out what's coming next. I know you can't tell us, but... <laughs> I remember you saying last time you was on that the OBE kind of engine was going to be utilised in or well, the platform, things. wasn't the it? The platform, yeah. 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 Um, is that is that what it's, Hugo's working on now? Is it is it based on the same platform? Yeah, I mean Hugo. It's not necessarily the OBE platform, but it's it's yeah. uh, it's a uh, it's a bit of technology that he's it's it's his baby, and he's absolutely so he's done tons and tons of detail and now what he's having to do is step back and go okay so now how does all this detail kind of dovetail together again i think i said you know obe was the first proof of concept of this mm. uh, and it was really in terms of things like quality of sound versus cpu use what was what's the trade-off and how does it work because some of the stuff that he's played me is astonishing <laughs> but it will bring your computer to its knees. So there's this constant yeah. kind of refinement. And then obviously there was this whole, that's really what took a lot of the time was integrating the secret source with a more commercial um, framework, which is Juice. Obviously that is the industry standard framework. And that took a lot of, there was a lot of head scratching yeah. Luckily, the youngsters were were really genned up on juice, so they knew all of loads of the ins and outs of that. So there was obviously a lot of dialogue as to right, how can we make this work, and how can we make this work. Uh, so now, obviously, the PC side of things is sorted out. I'm hoping that we're going to start to see a few more things come out. Excellent! Yeah, yeah. Can't wait for that. No more questions, please. We've got two that have just snuck in, and I'm, I'm going to. Hey, do yeah, it no, that's fine. First of all, if I don't put Mike's question, he will just berate me daily um, until uh, we do. So he wants to know: Is there any chance of iOS ports of anything? That's probably the number one question. It's like I don't know. You do something for Mac. Where's the PC? And then you do something. But where's the <laughs> iOS? Where's the Android? Uh, honestly, uh, Mike, amazing book, by the way. Uh, and thank you for sending it to me. Uh, I don't know. It's not something that's actually high up, kind of on the radar for us. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I just don't use iOS apps. Uh, yeah. So I think you know. I like this idea of I can use that with that with that with that. And for me, that you know, the laptop or the desktop just it it just works. Yeah. I I'm very reluctant to. I mean, obviously, I've got an iPad, but. I kind of like to leave it at home when I go out mm -hmm. on the rare occasions I do get to go out, <laughs> but you know, holidays and things like that. Otherwise I'm just going to be divorced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, and then finally, um, this is uh, from Andy synth addict again. Um, is there a synth that you've considered to model and then decided not to and why? Oh, there was, 
Well, actually, what's it, what's interesting for God, my hair. Um, <laughs> I know you what's feel. What's interesting <laughs> from our perspective is that we had started on the sem many moons ago, but when Tom announced that he was going to do it in hardware, I don't know. It just didn't feel right. Uh, so we did. We stopped. Uh, I was kind of like, you know, so we've got a 70 year old. I'd, I'd interviewed Tom a million years ago uh, when we did the Keyfax Omnibus book. Mm. Uh, and he was going through the whole hell with Gibson. And I was surprised at how, I guess I shouldn't have been, but he was uh, upset, rightly so. That's why yeah. I love this episode because it's got all <laughs> everything. You know, it's the trials and tribulations, redemption. It's just everything in the story. Uh, <laughs> but I kind of, we, we had a very serious discussion about it here. And I was like, you know, if he's going to bring out something that he wants, I don't know, 500, 600 bucks for, mm. why would we want to go and do something that's like, you know, 100 quid or 100 bucks and, and kind of, I don't know. It just didn't feel right. So yeah, uh, we came, we we stopped it, and it was only when he announced that he was he had he was stopping making the sems, uh, and it just dovetailed with a conversation with Hugo. He, this room was always mm -hmm. full of gear. I think you came, yeah. Uh, and Hugo turned up one day and said, "If there's one thing in here that you'd want to model," <laughs> uh, and it was purely selfish reasons because I was like, you know, at some point something in this is going to die, and and I was like that. Uh, and that was it. That was the beginning. Of yeah. it. But so yeah, the sem. Huh, weirdly. Yeah. There you go. We did do an OB. We called it SOB, which was quite funny. Yes. Uh, which was a kind of hybrid OB8 expander, uh, but it just it never sounded right to me. Mm. It just never sounded right. So it was just like no, no, sling it on the back burner, and then we never we never yeah. picked it up. Strange how they're both over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, congratulations on OBE version two. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on the the endorsement, which I know means a heck of a lot to you, having spoken to you many times about that. Um, congratulations on Mtron Mark II, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And Thank even you. before the show, we're playing, you know, playing around with it, and we're all dancing around, having a lot of fun. It's just a fun <laughs> thing to play around with. You yeah. cannot be grumpy with that. No. I think that's why I really gravitated to it. I mean, honestly, I spent a year on those. Uh, you know, re-tempo mapping all those mm. rhythms and wow. <laughs> restoring them, yeah. uh, which was a total head bump. But um, there was this moment where it was like, right, time to kind of play it. <laughs> and I'm kind of, you know, I'm a little bit grumpy at times. But it was <laughs> impossible, impossible yeah. to be grumpy. And that's yeah. what I love when, was it Marius liked he was doing, and he was doing this video and he was sort of <laughs> still really zen, but you could kind yeah. of see... He's happy underneath, isn't he? That's it. <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. Excellent stuff. Um, yeah, and it's just it's, it's just amazing. It's, it's really great stuff. And uh, Ben's having microphone issues again. Oh, it's again. <laughs> oh dear. Bless him. Um, so, yeah, look, thanks ever so much. Uh, please pass on our best to Chris. Um, yeah, we'll do. And, and to Hugo and the rest of the team because... You've, it's an amazing job. It's an amazing instrument. Um, you should be super proud. We, uh, I told you we use it on our end credits uh, music. Well, at the beginning, but I heard the sequence at the beginning. I was going to say, did you pick it up in the sequence? Yeah, so I, I had to do it, and so there it is. It's in, it's in, you know, it tops and tails our show. That's how much we love it. I loved um, it because with the cans on, it was like, yeah. I'm not allowed to use cans when I'm doing patch design because they're like, it's going to. Yeah, yeah. Change yeah. things for you, and that's not what people hear. So <laughs> this was the first time I think that I've listened to it on cans, and I was like, "Whoa, nice!" Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, brilliant. Thank you, guys, and thanks ever so much for your support. It's, it's massively appreciated. It's uh... always, anytime, and uh, yeah, anytime we want to come back on, let us know. And if you've got something else you want to plug, we're always here. Um, we're always, you know, we'll always give you the big ups. So uh, thank, thank you. you Enjoy much. your your Zoom call with California. Um, Best of luck with everything in the future. And uh, Dave Spears, everyone, big round of thank applause. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey. <laughs> Look at that. Technology is wonderful stuff. Cheers, Dave. All the best. Love to you and your family. I do, man. Take care. Take care. Nice to see you. See you again. Bye-bye. Oh, what a man. What a dude. Are you, are you, what, what's he doing? Has he bust it? Don't tell me you bust it. What's he doing? 
<laughs> doesn't work anymore. It's the, the, you're on mute, mate. You're on, hang on. No, you have to unmute. I've, it, so. I've had to, I've had to mute it because it just you're fudging lost around all, with it. It lost all connection and everything. I can hardly move my head. And I'm holding this like some sort of Freddie Mercury device. It's all gone wrong. <laughs> Somebody said in the chat, I'm on the road to nowhere. Well, I don't know what you're doing. Seriously, I mean, what can I say? Um, sort yourself out. <laughs> I know, yeah. That, I quite but, like this, though. It, I feel a bit like Julian Cope. You know, world shut your mouth. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! I'm almost climbing on Julian it. Cope is. No, no, no. Bless no. What a dude, though. Dave Spears, eh? Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say like OBE was brilliant anyway, but uh, yeah, this this so much better. version two is just it, it just takes it to another level again, and yeah, it was already up. <laughs> it yeah. was above everything else and anyway. And it's a free upgrade if you've already got it. And it's a mm. good upgrade. You know, it's not just a couple of tweaks here or there. There's some really, really useful stuff in there. Mm. And it's been discounted. So if you don't already own it, it's only ninety nine ninety nine plus plus sales tax, uh, wherever you are, uh, from one hundred forty nine ninety nine. So it's on offer as well. I mean, crikey. I mean, if, there's just no reason to not have this synth. And it is, I think everyone has said, it is the most analog sounding piece of software that you you've ever likely to have heard thus yeah. far in the history of analog uh, it's brilliant. software it's really good and it's not that it's not that heavy on the processor no, as well it's, it's very quite efficient yeah it, like some things like really hammer the processor especially on my yeah what 2009 mac pro uh but the obe runs perfectly fine on mine and that's saying something really you know mm. yeah yeah and, and the fact you because you're r running essentially eight synthesizers mm. plus all the other governs and mm. it's it's incredibly efficient on the cpu it's i mean i've not got a a modern machine mine's coming up to what 10 years old i think and mm. it works absolutely fine really good yeah, yeah. and then of course yeah. you have got uh the wonderful hang on you just can't. You just can't not feel funny yeah. and happy with that thing. It's just so. If you haven't got M Drum Mark II, get it. Brilliant. Mm. It really is very very good. Uh, Ken Lewis has just said it's time for me to upgrade my computer. Funnily enough, uh, I, I believe uh, Apple are about to release uh, the the new Mac Minis, which right. are supposed to have the Pro and the Max. So that's okay. what I've been waiting for. Really, is something where you can have a lot of memory because. 16 gig you know i know it handles memory differently now yeah yeah but it still doesn't feel right on you having 16 gig coming down from 64 gig to 16 mm. doesn't seem right so doesn't, i've doesn't, been waiting but, for that like you say yeah it's one of those things where you have to say oh actually it, it does handle it differently and so i wish they'd do like a little table saying you know if you have a 16 gig m1 it's equatable to this in an yeah. Intel, whatever. So you could just, just some sort of visualization. There might be something out there. If somebody knows of it, throw it in the chat. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping, you know, depending on whether I get a bonus this year and whether there's other things that need paying for, um, that uh, I can upgrade this thing at some point um, mm. to. And I, I, this is the big iMac, but it's not the Pro. But apparently, what they're going to do now is they're going to call the new big iMacs, iMac Pros. And so they're not right. going to be like the old iMac Pro, which was like super duper, like five grand's worth. Yeah. But it's just going to be the you know the name for the big screen ones. But mm. yeah, it's all money, isn't it? It's all money. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was Dave Spears. And um, absolutely stunned. You might... So, nobody's actually mentioned it, so I'm kind of like thinking maybe I shouldn't say anything. But I'm going to say it, because we've been talking up having a big guest on this show for, for some while. And Dave wasn't it, although we absolutely love Dave, but he wasn't it. Dave mm. actually came came to us and said, look, you know, this is coming out. If you want me to talk about it, I'm available. And our big guest is still in the works. And unfortunately, we kind of missed each other. And so mm -hmm. Dave wasn't the big guest, but he is a big guest to us anyway. Um, but we, our big guest will happen at some point, and he is very big so i'm told he tucks in the sock and everything um so so Junk. we, we are still Junky. getting that person but we thought we couldn't miss the opportunity of i think the first 
interview with Dave since uh, the OBE stuff all kicked off. And so uh, Mr. Wiggly says, yeah, I'm really sorry I couldn't be on today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'd Can't love to have you away. on any time. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it is a mystery guest. Uh, um, <laughs> and we will have them on soon. We're just working on it. But they're, it is what a case of they are that big that they have a, a schedule of somebody that big and it I mean, it's I a mean, nightmare danger of getting punched in the face yes by him but we're but we're willing to take that chance yes. <laughs> you're expecting yes you are aren't you <laughs> we don't push you honestly we don't push no, you no 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 not at all, not at all. <laughs> um, I'm just going anyway. to get paid yeah I do get paid don't I yes uh, but not with cash uh, okay. I should be over later mm, with a yeah. deposit yeah, uh, <laughs> So um, we've got about an hour or so to, or well, three quarters of an hour, to, to talk about other news topics, um, one of which we were going to sort of go into, but we might wait on this one because it didn't get much information. That was um, either Instruments updating mm. the uh, S2400 um, firmware, which was a big list of updates. Um, yes. But unfortunately, um, I got round to it late. I, I couldn't watch the... The li- they did a live stream yesterday, but I was on some other thing yesterday until about two o'clock yeah, in the morning. So, um, yeah, I don't know what it was horrible, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I missed the live stream. Um, however, mm. I did, I think, bring up this list. Where is it? I can't think where it is now. Uh, let's have a look here. Um, oh, here we go. Um, no, I've lost it again. So basically, yeah, there's a, a whole slew of um, of updates to the S2400, which is uh, looking rather good, um, and still um, high on my list of um, things that I would like to buy this year, along with the Hydrosynth Deluxe. There's a bouncing feature on it, isn't it? I noticed that. That, that looked I, really honestly, useful. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't say because I didn't really sort of look at it, but maybe we'll cover it next week. Yeah. Um, and, and certainly our friend Ken uh, in the room, he's, he's got one. He'll... Um, I'm sure he'll be doing stuff about it um, mm. on his channel. I think also, Ken, you can confirm this uh, for us. Dave mentioned your uh, an interview that with with Marcus um, Marcus Ryle, um, but you're doing some. Is it something else, or you're just repeating it on this Sunday? I noticed there was some, or did I just read my social media? I'll confirm with us in the chat, and we'll let people know because uh, yeah, we're going to be talking to Marcus. That will be very very interesting. Um, so we've got a bunch of things to kind of talk about newsy. Um, so let's let's have a look at some of those. Um, let's go. Where should we go first? Um, this is interesting. Car manufacturers are getting into software instruments because why wouldn't they? Yeah, this is odd. Um, so, relationship, isn't it? Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, there is this thing about you know, and they explain it very, you know sort of fancily in the in the marketing blurb, blurb about movement and uh you know obviously being in cars you're moving and it's about you know making music that kind of goes with all of that kind of stuff um crashing into a tree crashing yes you can play your instrument ah look out for that tree <laughs> um this there is a let me play this demo video of this because it is a kind of an interesting little thing um it's it's called move.mint uh, it's from kia the car manufacturer, the uh, Korean car manufacturer, uh, and this this is it. Movement in nature has inspired us for centuries. The movement of waves, the movement of wind, the movement of birds. Movement in nature is also what inspires Kia. So we decided to turn sounds in nature into the first instrument that inspires you. Kia presents movement. Scientific research shows that the sounds of movement found in nature produce pink noise, a sound frequency that can help trigger inspiration. The sounds of nature can actually help influence us to find flow states of consciousness. They can elicit alpha waves in the brain, these amazing electrical signals that are connected with creativity, inspiration, and states of flow. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, we won't do their advertising for them. Uh, but it's an interesting concept, and it's, it's an interesting little tool, and it's completely free of charge. And I was having a mess around with it the other day, and it seems like you can pick 
um, a, a, a different kind of sound background, like um, thunder, um, geezers, forests, forest birds, wind, water. Um, and it has this fairly simple interface, and I just can't find the bloody picture of the interface now, which is typical. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it's... Uh, well, there's, it's there's a bit of it. There's a bit of it there, yeah. It's just very simple. You choose your background, and then you can then play the, the instruments kind of on top. And as you're playing, the background sound kind of comes through. And I think, Ben, you were saying that, you know, you found that the you know the, the demonstration sounded really good, but actually in use, you were struggling to kind of get anything... Yeah, with I was I was buzzing when I when I watched that video. It was like, whoa, the science behind this man. Because I'm a sucker for anything <laughs> like that. I work in marketing, but I'm the biggest sucker for it as well. And you'd think that I'd know what they were doing, but obviously I don't. <laughs> and I'm now watching this, and I'm going, yes, come on, yeah, like, I can't wait. Everybody's going to get into this. We're going to have a Jaguar drum machine and everything. You know, it's going to be going off everywhere and. <laughs> I was really excited, and I thought, oh, this, this this pink noise thing makes perfect sense to me. This will channel me inspiration, and I'll be off. I don't know. I might sell everything and just work off this freak here thing. And then I put it on, and it went, meh. I thought, oh, <laughs> Yeah, Jesus. there was some odd noises in there, wasn't there? It's like, it was the most uninspiring thing I've ever... Some of the presets are in, in there are okay, you know, uh, programming it yourself's not too bad, but those, those like n natural sources that you mentioned, you know, like you've got like water, birds, yeah. and wind, and well, uh, basically all that does is add that sound behind what you're playing. So you've yeah. got like a square wave or a sine wave, and then there's these birds tweeting ah, ah. For, yeah. for no apparent reason <laughs> in the background. <laughs> It's like what, what what's going on here? I, I don't. I didn't look at it that much. Maybe if you could assign that as a modulator to to your sound, it might get a bit interesting then. But yeah. um, I, I was just a bit like, this had so much potential, and I'm left like <laughs> really, I don't know, disappointed. Really disappointed. Uh, yeah. But like you know, I, I, I've got no idea why Kia's decided to make a virtual instrument. That's that's really odd. Um, I mean, Tesla's come with a sequencer, don't they, or something mm. built in? So, do you think this is a trend now for car manufacturers? Can you imagine maybe, having maybe. your your Chrysler with um, you know Garage Band in it well, or this, something? It, as, I think we, it, <laughs> we're going to get a lot of crossover, though, aren't we? As things go on, you know, the Tesla's already like just got an iPad instead of any kind of controls, and pretty much, yeah. May, maybe like when we're about in our cars. We'll we'll have a lot of, like a, a productivity suite that's included with the car, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What's I'm sorry, going on, I, but... I didn't see that pedestrian. I was too busy <laughs> quantizing my drums. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, must yeah. admit, I'd be looking forward to them coming in for repair. That's yeah. great. It's all they left. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah well, mate, your, your power supply's gone, mate. That'll have to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but yeah. I mean, Fiat do one next and take it out of the box and it's already started rusting. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Whoa. Low, blow, low blow, low <laughs> blow, low blow. No, but seriously, I mean, it's it's forget the fact it's a car manufacturer that's behind this and funding it. Yeah. It's completely free of charge. It is a plug-in synthesizer. Um, it, I'm sure people will be doing some cool things with it, but you know, maybe it's just not you know to everyone's taste. Possibly, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it'd fit in some some people's like setups. Great, you know. Once you got to grip, because it it is capable of some really good stuff. Mm. But uh, I think the the marketing builds it up a little bit too much, and then the only option is to be disappointed with it because <laughs> because it's not it, it's not gonna blow your mind, you know, no. when you put it on, and the marketing's telling you that it will, and it's yeah. not. So if you go into it with low expectations, you might like it. Yeah, yeah, but you look at that marketing of it; it doesn't seem to be aimed towards musicians. Yeah, it's yeah, more that's like, true. Um, yeah. You know, the, the alternate lifestyle type of thing. And, mm. Millennials, <laughs> <laughs> careful. Um, yeah, no, I reckon somebody will will do something amazing with that, and we'll all go, "Wow!" Um, but they'll they've probably spent a lot of time doing it. But look, it's a free instrument. You you want to go to, uh, go to worldwide .kia .com, um and you'll find uh, movement there. Do you have a price? Uh, it's free. It's free. It's free. It's so we're complaining about something free here. Yeah. 
It's, it's uh, free. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't even have to own a Kia car. Advert, wouldn't you? I think they yeah. did, didn't they? I don't know. But it's, it's completely free of charge for Windows and, and Mac. Um, and there's there's lots of examples of what you can do with it. And there's even the, an album, apparently, they've made with this thing. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the recordings are superb. Yeah. The, they are. So, there were some quite expensive libraries that dealt with just doing, you know, natural sounds. Mm. And, you know, then, yeah. yeah, they're fine. There you go. Cool. Kia Movement is available from kia.com. Uh, go and check those out. Um, it, yeah, it's free. What are you going to lose? Um, yeah. There was something new from Cherry Audio announced yesterday. They did their usual um, sort of seven-day tease. Um, nobody could quite work out what this was. And it turned out it wasn't an instrument. Uh, what it was uh, was this, uh, which was Rack Mode Signal Processors. That's not a bad little uh, advert, that is it? Um, so this isn't an instrument at all. This is a, a set of processes, all based off of uh, Moog stuff, from what I can tell. Um, I'm sure there'll be some more learned people. Um, but what it has, let me just bring the uh, the page up here. So here it is. It's 99 bucks. It's currently uh, 30 bucks off. Um, and it contains a vocoder. Uh, for instruments and effects, uh, a phaser, ring modulator, string filter, frequency shifter, graphic EQ, and a parametric EQ, and is available now. And there you go; you can see some of the uh, the vintage Moog uh, units that this is based on. Um, yet again, you know, Cherry Audio have come up with a, a package of of stuff for a reasonably affordable price. Um, I was getting excited for a new instrument, but no, uh, it. Uh, it it wasn't. It was these thoughts on these gentlemen. Any uh, any burning? I think it, it's a, it's a good addition to the collection. Uh, I think we're getting really greedy because I'm looking at it like ninety nine quid. Whoa, you know, used to paying for, for Cherry Audio stuff. We're used to paying like twenty odd quid, aren't we? But mm. you're getting a lot of stuff for that. We're just getting yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. just getting really greedy. I think. Uh, yeah, so Basically, eight it, effects, isn't it? With, uh, it, it? It's a it's a great collection of uh, of gear as well. You know that all that Moog stuff is is really like you know held in high esteem because it's mm. it's got a lovely tone to it. I don't know how accurately uh, they they've managed to recreate the the tones of the originals because I, I don't have them at hand. But what what they've done sounds pretty decent and. I think for 99 quid you're getting what what did you say it was seven is it seven eight eight eight, eight. eight units yeah. yeah yeah and they're they're all pretty useful you know like things like the, those uh, the, the 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 phaser and the, the, there's a string filter I think as well yeah there's, string there's filter some, ring mod yeah but, mm. but the, you know you, you put put these as uh, effects on other synths and it, it brings a load of uh, new mm. possibilities to that that plug-in instrument or even even hardware you could put hardware through this couldn't you so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's uh, you know it's a good value package for for 99 quid and mm. it, it yeah. sounds all right yeah, sounds okay. Ken, what do you think yeah, of the, yeah. yeah I, do, I think I might do you have much actually. of the original hardware come through um, yeah, you do, and I'm so glad that there is a plug-in version of it now. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, if there was a way of actually, you know, getting that vocoder onto a little Adreno and just putting it inside that Craftwork one, go there, you go Daniel. Sort of <laughs> Job done. Yeah. yeah. Bye bye. But <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where um, you know, like, like Ben was saying, you go, oh, ninety-nine pounds. And you go, hang on a minute, no, it's eight things. Mm. And it all sounded pretty cool. If I had one bugbear, it was like, I wish they hadn't put a CR78 in the music because I was so distracted by that. Oh, are they doing a CR78? 
Please do it. Please do it. Well, might, might have been a teaser in there. Yeah. yeah, you never know. Mm. Yeah, no. <laughs> but there you go. Cherry Audio uh, rack mode signal processors um, available now for ninety nine of your US dollars. It's thirty dollars off at the moment. CherryAudio.com. And um, if well, we'll certainly be asking about this uh, just to let you know that we've actually got Dan Goldstein from Cherry Audio in just uh, two weeks' time coming on the show. Um, so we'll be talking to Dan about this and about all the other stuff that they've done. Um, so yeah. Uh, Cherry Audio, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. There you go. Mm. Uh, what shall we talk about now? Because we talk about Ben looking like he's been assaulted by a black swan. I know. <laughs> I've got it all this now. I keep watching him. He's got <laughs> this state of the art, you know, uh, yeah. arm, and he's holding it with his hand. Yeah, I'm doing me a hawk Have you not got a table there, like a desk? No. It, what, it, it's ah. it's like a set of. It's like a. It is a desk. But the, the, the top of the, the desk top is drawers. Yeah. Some of that makes it too deep to, to use this thing. Uh, so I thought I was being really clever attaching it to me uh, T V uh, bracket. Use the hole drill, you know, drill the hole in them. This Yeah. This thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I might try that. Yeah. I might try that. I can't do well, this every week. Yeah. No, you can't, no, absolutely. Woohoo <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Simpson. Right. Um yeah, yeah. Let's see what... Oh, God, I've done... I really must stop doing this. Right, there we go. Unlock my screen. Um, let, what have we got here that's next? Oh, yes. Um, IK Multimedia um, have just released a, a new version to their Modo Drum uh, package, which is basically um, it's physically modelled drums, but th there's a few samples in there, um, but a, a lot of the stuff is modelled in this thing. Uh, let's have a quick listen to a watch of the video. Moto Drum 1.5 adds three new drum kits and a new free entry into the Moto Drum world. The new Moto Drum Custom Shop is available free, giving you one of our most popular kits and the full power of the Moto Engine, plus the ability to purchase kits a la carte. With up to 13 kits to choose from, it's never been easier to customize Moto Drum to best suit your needs and budget. There you go. So Moto Drum is essentially a physically modeled um, drum kit program that can also uh, it also support samples. Um, and you get these drum kits that uh, you can then uh, tweak and mess around with to your heart's content. You can adjust the you know the tension of the skins and the drum positions, the type of drum sticks or beaters or whatever. Um, and it does work really, really nicely. I've tried this because I have a e drum kit and I use Superior Drummer 3, which is big libraries on a on an external hard drive. And the load I haven't gotten to SSD on it yet, but the load times, you know, because it's, you know, sometimes over a gigabyte per kit, if not more. Mm. Whereas this has a much lighter footprint because a lot of it is of course modeled. But the problem is is that I personally think that the sampled uh, stuff on superior drummer sounds a little nicer but this is still very good because it is fairly low footprint and all 1.5 does is as i say they've brought in three new drum kits um so you get those added to the package but they've also made this new cs version which is their custom shop version which means you can get modo drum the whole modo drum kind of instrument but with one drum kit and then you can then pick and choose and buy from all of the drum kits that are available so they're about 50 pounds each so each drum kit you can just pick and choose so if you want the the one that's oriented to more kind of like heavy metal stuff you can do that and so on and so forth but the it's the customizability if that is a word i'm sure it is um i'm just trying to see let me just bring the screen up i did actually i've actually got the instrument loaded uh, in logic here but it might be easier for me to just uh find the web page and we'll share that instead so uh yeah images there we go so um yeah you, you can pick and choose from you know these preset kits uh but you can swap drums you know between different kits so you're not uh, so much stuck with them and there's lots of you know i mean certainly there's an old ludwig type kit there 
um and then you've got these big rack mounted things and then you can pick and choose the drums and the cymbals and everything that you put into your virtual kits and then once you've done that you can also mess around with the um the, you know the the dimensions uh, stop that you know the skin sizes and the the damping effects and whether it's a clear head or a um or not and different types of beaters and sticks and you know you can change the thickness and diameter and depths of the shell and all of this happens in real time because it's modeled it's pretty damn quick um so it's, it's you know it's it's very customizable uh, you can change your kick beater from you know wood to felt to plastic and you know what happens you know when you're hitting in the different areas of your e-drum pad or you don't obviously have to use this with an e-drum kit you can use this with anything really um but yeah there you go i mean it's a, well it's 299.99 for the full instrument which is quite a lot of money when superior drummer is probably about the same but then the packs of drums are about 150 each so this is probably a more affordable but certainly more lightweight my big bugbear with this is the fact that it's a 1 to 1.5 upgrade so it's like a you know it's a step you know whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the technical term is it's not a full 1 to 2 upgrade and they want you to pay for it even if you own version 1 you still have to pay something like 80 quid um and then I went to install this and it let me install it to go go to 1.5 so I've got the new 1.5 engine but then like three three kits were blanked out and I then had to, you know, if I wanted them, I had to go and buy them. So it's just kind of, it's a, it's a very messy installation process or authorization. I'm, I'm not wonderfully happy with it. But anyway, there you go. Yeah. Um, real drums. I guess, Ben, with your uh, live act, it's mostly electronic drums, not these sorts of things. So you might not yeah. have too much of a... It's mainly electronic drums and songs that originally had acoustic drums is because we want that live consistency through the night we tend to replace with electronic drums <laughs> so i i have like very little use for something like this but <clears throat> i think it sounds great and I, the, the, I, do you actually as a, a a drummer yourself do you actually need that level of customizability you know do you need to do you need to be able to alter the depths of everything and the, the you know the the thickness of the skins and what have you i don't know well, no, it's a good question because, like, if you're playing a real drum kit, so if you've got an acoustic kit, there's only so much you can do because you've bought your drums, you've mm. sat down and you thought, right, I want this diameter shell, I want this thickness, I want this type of wood, I want these type of heads, and you buy those, and then there's very little you can do to change it, you know, because you've 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 committed to that that sort of manufacturing standard. So to be able to then change all that stuff it's kind of like a dream come true for most drummers you know you'll find that a lot of drummers will go out and buy a kit and they'll they'll specify they'll they'll you know find a manufacturer who can do a kick drum and some toms and then they'll go they'll probably hand pick their snare and then they'll hand pick their metal so you know yeah. the hi hats and the cymbals will be you know what they want um so to have that degree of customization is quite liberating um but then of course it adds all these choices into it and then you say, well i don't know the mix and match this and i don't like that superior drum is the same because you've got a huge amount of, of stuff that you can choose from and every library you buy then becomes available in the whole package and you can take a you know a tom from this kit and mix it with a snare from that kit and some cymbals from that kit and put it all together and yeah. you get your your actual perfect kind of custom kit and you're not restricted to it because then you can just swap them out or layer them and mess around with the you know the, the the beaters or the drumsticks or whatever it is that you're you're using so yeah it's it's nice but yeah it can maybe give you too much choice yeah, yeah. but it's oh. all good it's all good do you uh dabble much with drum plugins kent or are you just like do you stick to the the usual stuff i don't even stick to the usual stuff <laughs> it's like like i said yesterday i i don't think i've written a track that actually had any significant rhythm on it since 2012. I don't know why. I just, <laughs> yeah, just I just am been ambling, and I haven't really gone uh, into into any significant beats at all. 
Um, mm. But I'm meaning to, uh, like I said, with, with that MPX. Yeah. Even Ty said, you know, it's good to start off with that as a drum machine. It's not so you know, mind-bendingly complicated that way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping to do is get to it at some point. Cool. Mm. Well, there you go. Modo Drum is out um, now. It's two two nine nine. Um, if you want it, you can. If you've got Jam Points, IK Multimedia's kind of loyalty thing, you can use it against that to get thirty percent off, depending on how many points you've got. Uh, if you are a Modo, Modo Drum user, um, you can benefit from significant upgrade discounts. Uh, it's available now from ikmultimedia.com. What I'm hoping to do is once I've got um, some space to set up my drum kit again, because I had to put it all away when I got all these fair lights in. Um, it's a shame. I, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it is a shame. But it is because actually, you know, my son likes to play the drums as well. So I've kind of yeah. deprived him of, of being able uh, to do that. Yeah. So um, I want to get them set up at some point. And because um, I've I've been buying some upgrades for Superior Drummer 3, haven't been able to play with them on, actually on the kit, but you know, you use them elsewhere. But So yeah, we'll do that at some point. Um, I'm going to come to that one in just a moment. So one last news topic this kind of bundles four things into one and that is let me, I'm going to have to do this in a slightly different way uh, so we're going to kick off so our friends friends, not our friends um, trick. Yeah, there they are um, yeah. so <laughs> Behringer oh. I've been quiet for a little while then in the last few days there has been a slew of announcements now one of them was this mm. this is called the pro vs soul it's a hybrid vector synthesizer um, with presets and full midi implementation modeled after the profit vs from 1986 but with many extra functions it has 127 wavetables and 32 presets plus a sequencer arpeggiator and display with an oscilloscope Development's completed, and once they receive the chips, it will go straight into production. Estimated price, a mere $99. What do you think? And there it is. Now, um, if we have a quick look at the picture in full here. There we go. Um, get rid of my little pop-ups. So there it is. Now, somebody came up with this brilliant analogy on the uh, on the, the PSM Facebook page. It says, it looks like a modal sculpt has had sex with a Korg Volker and this is what has come out uh, and it kind of does um it very much is and I, I think you know looking at the joystick there i think sony are uh, asking for it because <laughs> yeah. um, it's definitely a play playstation joystick there but it's a you know, it's a cute ish little desktop synth um that models a pro uh, profit vs which i think apart from arturia's software version i don't think there's anything similar out there hmm. any thoughts on on that i mean so Did i think ian ian steer said in the facebook group that it's like it's only four voice and he would want eight but it's just a 99 you know quid yeah no, i did the profit vs have analog filters i think it did kent can you confirm or deny i can't remember no uh, anybody in the remember. chat now because uh, uh, they, they, they must be digital filters on this. They can't. They can't be knocking that out with analog filters uh, for ninety nine quid. I don't no, think. Oh, they're, 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 yeah, they're digital. So whether they're actual digital yeah. filters or yeah. modelled filters, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not into the the, the small farm factor thing at mm. all. I, I just. It's put me off so many things. I, I never got a key mm. step because I didn't, uh, uh, you know. The only thing that I have got that's that's like little like that is that Akai um, controller thing. I like that, but mm. I don't want loads of tiny stuff. I, my eyesight's, you know, <laughs> failing as I get older. I can't see, I can't see the buttons on this polymath thing here, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna struggle with that, but. You know, I, I, I think for the money, 99 quid, uh, and, it, you know, it's, it's going to be brilliant for somebody. Mm. Um, uh, it's a shame. Yeah, it's a shame <laughs> they didn't make a full-size one. There's a lot of this going on, isn't there? Like, reduce it. It's like big things are not desirable anymore. It's like we've got to make everything smaller. When Dave was on before, I noticed his curse veal at the side of him. Yeah. 
and it's got that flat top, you know, where you can put another synth on it. Yeah. And that's just something that I wish that well, more manufacturers would have, you know. So my KX88, excuse the uh, the dust cloth on my polybrick, <laughs> but I've got um, my Live and XFM, my Uno Synth Pro, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. my TD3, and they all just sit, because I, I don't use any of the, the buttons yeah, on the Yeah, you don't need really to, do you? Yeah. So, yeah, they, it is kind of convenient that they, they sit on there. Um, yeah. But... Um, maybe it's a maybe it's a a limitation that's driven by the the the, the current sort of component shortage and and I don't know. Or, I just I mean, think it's it, a lot of people want to stick something in a laptop bag, don't they, and get off, you know? And, yeah. And that 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 for that it's perfect. Yeah. Just for me personally, I'd rather have great big massive synths. Yeah, you, you feel as though you, you you know you're using something of substance when you're using it. Well, they are much cheaper to ship. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I yeah, there is yeah. that as well. Yeah. Bundle. Yeah. I mean, get a, you get billions of them onto a container to ship, can not you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. And just, at ninety nine bucks, one. I mean, you can't you can't sniff at ninety nine quid for a for something that that could potentially has the potential. Obviously, we haven't heard anything yet, but you know, if it does, you know, do that profit vs thing. Mm. That's not bad for ninety nine mm, quid. Yeah. If it sounds but, like the original, it's going to be brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. So. But it's not just that that they've come up with. They've also come up with this, which is the JP four thousand, which is in a a very similar form factor. Um, <laughs> it looks even worse. It and that's does. Four voice as, that's four voice as well. That's four voice. Now I wonder, apparently, I it's this exactly the same board with different software on it. The what? Well, it, it could very well be. Mm, yeah. Could and. Be. The, the the marketing blurb that came along with this was all based around Uli Behringer's desire to put affordable synthesizers in the hands of young children, which kind of sounds a bit wrong when you say it like that, but you know what I mean. So yeah, he and this they're claiming they're going to sell for forty nine bucks. But that's but that's it brilliant. Looks, I mean, that on its own is is a a noble, I guess, um, aspiration. How, that how could looks this sound? smaller. That's got to be smaller than the other one. That yeah, I think that's like what's that little cog thing that you've got? I think reckon because look at the size of the USB. Oh yeah, to, I mean yeah, I mean looks, it's, it's, yeah. it's not going to be that much bigger than that, I guess. No, I think it's going to be around that size. I mean, I, I've said it many a times that I you know I wish Behringer would do what they do, but just not blatantly copy. The designs and the looks of things. You know, why do you need to make an SH101 clone that looks like an SH101 clone when you can just make a single oscillator? I was having this conversation with Kent, so he's he hearing this twice today. Why can't you just make a single oscillator analog synth, but put it in a case that doesn't look anything like a, an SH101, but it it will do what an SH101 does? Yeah. Now, they, what they've done here with this is they've kind of said, well. <laughs> Our design team are pretty rubbish because that looks ugly as hell. It looks like a mini accordion. It's got an analog filter on it, though. Look, apparently, yeah. it's a it's a modelling synthesizer. So, uh, it's not I, an analog filter. It's well, it says analog filter at the top. Mm -hmm. So, is it or isn't it? We don't know, but we'll find out, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's an odd one. Um, well, you can see that you know it's design, designed for, like you say, young children because. Only their eyes could see that display. Very true. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's small. Screen, and I can't it's small it and is. it's simplified. Yeah. There's yeah. A, a massive mistake, though. It, it's it's a JP four thousand, which we we all presume to mean Jupiter. Like that's what I presume it to mean. Anyway, it's got a picture of Saturn on it. Shoddy. How true. <laughs> Shoddy skills there. So. What's under the hood is a programmable four-voice hybrid synthesizer with two analog modelling oscillators per voice. Analog filter for warm and natural sounds. So it apparently is. Reproduction of the JP8K sound engine with a super saw waveform. So it's basically a four-voice JP8000. Two-operator FM engine. Interesting. 12-bit DAC for classic sound. <laughs> um, but look, I mean... Okay. If you're going to do all of that and put it in a little box, I don't care how ugly it is, and you're going to sell it for forty nine quid, with the um, the aim of getting you know synthesis into the hands of yeah, the younger great. generation, yeah. kind of looks a little bit better from the angle there with the slope, but it's still it's still like it's fallen out of the ugly tree and hit every stick on the way down. It really reminds me of something. 
Go some, on. Some, no, it reminds me of some <laughs> synths. No, no, no. It really reminds me of some synths from a billion years ago. From mm. Czechoslovakia or something. Yeah, it's it does that have look. that Eastern European feel about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but there you go. So that, that, was, that was one thing. Uh, sorry, two things, sorry. So we've had... Um, We've had this, which is the JP4000, and we've had this, the, the Pro VS Soul. Oh, the, the JP4000 Spirit. Spirit, Soul, you know, is there a theme going on? I don't know. But the other two things that we've had... The CS80 um, Carps. Oh. No, 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 we'll get to that. Because I'm, I'm trying to segue stuff. Oh, sorry. So um, we all know that they've been doing the UBXA um, keyboard and... Uh, obviously speaking today we know that there's been you know issues with names and stuff but um we still haven't seen it yet but what they have said is they are going to produce this desktop version i like that which you know is it's nice to have options and it's got you know it's got it looks looks it looks like the deep mind 12 desktop case that it looks mm. exactly the same uh, right. apart from well, the layout of the buttons but yeah, that'll yeah. be rack mountable as well that yeah 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 so mm. Excuse it's me, from the back. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it, it gives you options, um, which mm. is uh, very interesting. Um, and then finally, there was this. Uh, so they're giving us an update on their DS80 development, and they were talking about voice channels. This clearly, as, as Kent will tell us, is is not a voice channel card that anyone has ever seen, but it's <laughs> something. Yeah. Um, but they're replicating the authentic circuitry. Uh, and apparently he's truly challenging, uh, but he's now you know, John Price is now delivering his masterpiece. It's some way off, but they are still working on it. Um, what what part of a CS80 could that be? There's there's no round knobs, is there? What what's going on no. there? Are they buttons or what? What, what is it? Don't know. Yeah, they're, they're going to use potentiometer, uh, pen, potentiometers instead of sliders. Are they? And by the looks of that board, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. That's a weird move. But what that looks like, it looks like um, not a voice channel card, but the the um, eight part channel card. So you'd have voice cards sitting behind that. Mm. Yeah. You know, and that should like your main mess with it, because it, it looks like they're going to do it as a like a nineteen inch. Right. Job by the looks mm. of it. That's what oh. Like. That's what maybe they maybe the, yeah, because yeah. it has that lock top. Uh, loading USB doesn't it like a lot of their yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mm. Neutron and the oh do you Sony. think that yeah is that supposed to be a desktop version then or but they, they were promising uh, a keyboard version weren't they mm. well I'd say probably they were certainly intimating that but, yeah so, they had yeah. a few mock-ups of the keyboard yeah, yeah. version didn't yeah. they and it was looking alright that's why I didn't know what this was because that was all sliders on that mock-up I thought, well, they're yeah, not we sliders. With, you know, with mock-ups, it's, you know, yeah. you can have a horse with wheels on it. It doesn't mean that's what they're going to do. Like, <laughs> you know, really, really. So, yeah. yeah. But it looks right. like, you know, throughout the, the chip shortage crisis there, uh, you know, Behringer have been, you know, busy doing stuff. Mm. Um, and they're just giving us an update on those. You know, the most surprising things were those, you know, cheap little boxes, which, you know, could be interesting. I'd like to, I'd like to hear them, see what they're, see what they're like. Um... So, before we go on to... Well, that's all the news, but um, we need to get Kent to earn his keep. So we're going to do that in just a moment. Ooh. But um, mm -hmm. Ken Pierce did uh, bring this to light when we were talking about um, the effects on the OBE. Um, so the guy behind those is, is the guy behind Sign Vibes. Um, he is in the Ukraine, um, in Kharkiv, um, I, I'm not going to Mr. Pavlov that's all I'm going to say I'm not quite sure how you pronounce his uh, Christian name so I shan't um, but yeah so they've uh, yeah there you go G4 software DSP licensing for OBE V2 and the Mtron Mark II as well lots of stuff that this guy has done and of course the sign vibe stuff on its own we're big fans of that uh, whether it's um, plugins for the Mac or Windows or for your Korg NTSs and mini logs and, and, and so on and so forth. We don't know how he is, um, where he is, what he's doing. If he's of a certain age and he's in uh, Ukraine, then ev there's every chance. Very scary thought that he might have um, a, a weapon 
handed to him and go and told to fight, which uh, is very scary. I think none of us here oh, yeah. will even begin to contemplate. Um, well, let's open it, hope that all that nonsense is over quite soon and everybody's yes. safe, you know. Yeah, it's and it, I, don't, I honestly don't know if we have any, any viewers um, in that part of the world. I, I'd like to hope that we do have one or two. Uh, if you have friends or family out there, then it's a very stressful time. But, uh, yeah, we, we don't... This is a synthesizer show. We don't get into the politics of things, but um, I th I'm sure we, we all it's send the our humanity side of it, isn't it? Yeah, we we send all of our best to the people yeah. of Ukraine and to the people of Russia as well, because there's a, a huge amount of people there that do not want anything like this. Um, and a couple of thousand very brave Russians went out to protest um, in Moscow, which that's got to take some balls that is yeah, yeah 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 that's yeah. very brave so all power to them and we hope that it all comes to a, a peaceful peaceful a conclusion as soon. possible as yeah. soon as possible yeah definitely mm. anyway so yeah if you have if you've been thinking about buying some sign vibe stuff maybe now's the time to do it so that when um our temley i think that's how you pronounce yeah. it when when he comes back um he'll have a, a few pennies in the pot to um maybe by himself it's great beer. stuff as well it's it's it really, really stuff, it, it's yeah. really inventive uh effects you know yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. just doesn't do the norm and it, it's very useful so yeah yeah that's really, good stuff. really good stuff so please do support him and um you know support ukraine in any way that you can even if it's just vocal support please do uh right so um cox not yours indeed Cox Electronics. You may or may not have ever heard of this name. I hadn't until yesterday mm. because I found this video. Oh, I, say, I didn't find it. It appeared on my social media feeds. I think it was via um, Matrix Synth, I think. Mm. And this is the apparently the ultimate upgrade for the Yamaha CS80. So here is a CS80, and let me just pause the video there because I just want to sort of show what's going on here. So there is a small unit uh, here, which you can see in the little blow up there, uh, the CS80 programmer from Cox Electronics. This is an Electra, I can't remember what the name of it is now. Is it the Electra 1? Anyway, it's basically, uh, um, it's like a, a configurable MIDI controller. So yeah. you, can, you have this, you know, screen at the top there and so he's just using that this is not part of the system he's using that to just kind of uh visualize what's going on um nice to see everybody take a drink what's that sticking out of the back of the cs80 programmer everyone witty witty <laughs> oh, yeah. mm -hmm. mm. take a drink um Coffee. so he's using that there and there is a single apparently there's a single connection from this device into the back of uh, the CS80 of course that isn't all that's, there's a lot going on and we'll tell you about it in just a minute but mm. um, this isn't his demonstration this is a customer's demonstration but what this is doing um, first of all he's just demonstrating um, the eight voices that are not in tune so he'll he'll cycle through um, the patch uh, using this auto tune function that's on built in as part of the programmer and you can check the voices one at a time, and here he goes. I can't hear that, Robbie. You can't hear it? No. Well, that was bloody good, wasn't it? I know what it is now, actually. Let me just stop this. No, that's what they sound like. <laughs> yeah, that's what a broken CSA <laughs> sounds like. That's what a broken one sounds like, yeah. Kent knows. <laughs> um, let's start that again. Here we go. Just more smoke. <laughs> So, where are we? It was about here, wasn't it? So, he's cycling through each of the voices. Hear that? So, you can hear there's obviously something not quite right there. £122,000, and it sounds like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kent, tell me, if you had those voices that were out of tune, what is the standard process that you need to go through to, to tune each of those voices? Uh, uh, well, you let it warm up for 20 minutes, flip the lids, put it on two foot, do all of the uh, initial tune uh, trim pots, then bottom C, do the next trimmer down on each card, 16, mm -hmm. then set it to uh, four foot, 
and do the four foot trimmers across all the cards set it to eight foot do all the eight foot trimmers set it to 16 do all the 16 foot trimmers roughly how long does that take uh, me about 10 minutes to do that whole thing okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so with this little unit here you go into tuning mode Ooh. and it's done i think no no mm -hmm. it's just going through the, there you go it's almost done certainly not it's not certainly not 10 minutes it's uh, quite a rapid thing there you go tuned right and he's now going to prove this by cycling through the voices <laughs> So I think you'll agree that straight away it's kind of, you know, it's saved 10 minutes of your life by doing that. But of course it can do a whole bunch more. Um, what can it do? Well, I've got the, the specs here because I, I emailed um, the gentleman behind Cox Electronics. Um, and I did say that maybe he should think of a slightly better name. But um, Mark Cox is the, the guy behind it. And uh. there you go. Um so you get three banks of 128 freely programmable performances, six banks of 128 freely programmable presets, the possibility of dumping performances and presets via SysX, MIDI send and receive of almost every parameter, there's over 100 CC messages, full MIDI support of the CS80's uh, keyboard's polyphonic aftertouch, special keyboard settings like uh, octave transpose velocity and aftertouch response, and so uh, extra... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's an extensive thing. What you don't see in this video, and uh, this is going to spoil it somewhat, but there aren't many of these around. I don't have a price for it, but you have to give it to this guy to fit because it's not just a box that you plug in. All he will, for the price of the unit, which I don't know what it is, um, give, it an, give your CS80 an extensive service and replace all electrolytic capacitors uh, which are around 450 of them all sliders and switches will be professionally cleaned uh, cleaning and readjustment of the keyboard contacts cleaning of the polyphonic aftertouch parts removal of five old boards replaced by seven new ones um, the the YM26600 and 26700 chips are replaced by modern equivalents. Mm -hmm. uh, around 250 additional wires, several mods to the boards, and around 70 extra capacitors. Complete calibration of all circuit boards, and then you get the programmer with a single connection that mounts on the back of the CS80. Um, and there's a very short list of things that it doesn't control, and there are obvious things like uh, the sustain and foot pedal uh, stuff, the master volume control can't be controlled by this. So it's kind of the, you know, the obvious things. But seeing as we have probably one of the world's greatest CS80 experts in the room, um, what are your initial thoughts on this, well, Mr. Spong? Well, looking well, at you? But, well <laughs> my, my initial thoughts are... Uh, yeah. Go on, you go, on. You tell no, go on, keep digging. No, no, yeah, no, go no, go on, Ken. All right, you're done. All right, okay. I'll get out of it. Um, initial thoughts. Good for him. Mm -hmm. um, second thought, you... There's at least three months of research and development I can throw in the bin now. Um, this is a project that I've been working on extensively, um, except mine transmits MPE when you play mm -hmm. the keyboard. Um, it's a very limited um, market. Um, I'm, I also know, and there'll be quite a few who are not going to be keen on shipping their CS80 to Norway. Yeah. Um, Holland, did, sorry. Is it Holland? Either way, it's it's shipping it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so it's all right for people who live near. Um, but the, the thing about this is, is that it's uh, it's the equivalent of the NAM, uh, the LAM mm -hmm. upgrade they had for the memory mug. Yeah. And this is a really, really extensive um, uh, upgrade. Um, uh, you know he's going to he's going to replace the CAS board, the SH board, the TKC board, and um, the two 
uh, TSB boards that do all the aftertouch. Um, it's uh, it's just loads and loads and loads and loads of wiring that it's going to have to do. Mm. It's uh, it's going to be away for months. Yeah, and it's going to cost. I reckon the price of the kit, the actual upgrade and the fitting. Um, probably no change from eight and a half, nine k. Yeah, something in that region. I mean, because he's, he's, he said he got CC controls to the um, front panel. Yeah, but not the um, but the performance controls down the bottom. Mm. It's probably because he's run out of um, possible CC numbers to work with, and that's why he's not using them. Right. Well, what he's going to—I'll show you. Look, what he's got to do is he's got um, that's a that's a, the program, one of the program cards. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. And yeah. There's four of these little puppies in there, mm-hmm. and every single um, little solder pot here mm-hmm. um, is going to have to be uh, connected to that controller. Yeah. So he can get control of, of each slider. Um. And then he's got to do the same with uh, the, the t- trigger boards as well. Mm-hmm. Don't even see that. But it's yep. And there's five of these puppies. Right. And they do the aftertouch and the initial. Um, and there's, like I said, there's five boards underneath. It's a good idea. Um, of course it was, because I thought of it. <laughs> but it's also, what it is, is he's doing what I was in the process of doing, but he's got to the finish line before me. Yeah, and uh, all right, so cool, and so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pursue it, and I'm gonna you know I'm not gonna do a Beringer and copy what he does. Uh, I've got, I've, we've got another project already to to look at. Um, Fiona is still spitting blood. <laughs> 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 I've never seen anybody scream at a laptop like she did when she saw that video a couple of days ago. Oh dear! And come bursting into the kitchen, going, "Come over, look at this." <laughs> but I said, "Look, it's, you know, I didn't copyright it, darling." And um, so, yeah, it'd be very, very expensive. It's a limited market, probably about two hundred kits he'll sell. Um, yeah, but no, good luck to him. Well, I mean, according to the email that I got from him, which I'm just going to read here. Mm. Um, yeah, so he's very few have got them at the moment. That was one. That was mm. a customer. That that video. Um, uh, lots of it involves lots of work is only installed here at my workshop in the Netherlands so please keep that in mind also there is a waiting list um, so we, yeah uh, it looks a really interesting thing but like you say it is a, it's a limited market but I suppose it's one of those things that you know if you buy an expensive car you're likely to get, you know, be able to afford the expensive insurance that goes with it. So I guess mm. if you buy an expensive CS80, then the chances are you, you've probably got the funds to, to do this to it as well, if, if that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, he might run into a couple of issues along the way because it's all very well... Um, it's like Rudy used to do with, with, the, uh, with the lamb. You couldn't send him a, a, a memory mug that was faulty in any way. Mm. He wouldn't work on it. Um, so good luck shipping an 80 and it arriving in one piece yeah um, it, it's, so he'd still have to repair them um, there may be faults in there that even the owner didn't know it had that he'll, he'll have to fix and yeah but I suppose you know, that will come out in the service that he does because yeah. he says you know he gives it a full service so I guess that's yeah service fixing is one anything, thing yeah. fixing so that's going to add something else yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so I don't really envy him the, no. the task I mean it's alright for me I have the spares but mm. um, unless he's got a bucket of them out of the back it's going to run mm. into problems I think but no good luck to him yeah indeed well why mm. don't you cheer yourself up and let us hear what a real CS80 sounds like could you maybe give us a little performance mm. I can push some keys so go on then right, hang on a sec don't don't yeah don't trip over don't <sighs> knock your microphone stand over. Oh, I can't. Well, it, no, this is a really good one. It's only it's only nineteen quid, I think. <laughs> don't tell Ben. I don't know what's happened Shh. to Ben. He's, it looks like his camera's gone as well. Now he's kind of oh. gone off. But we'll we'll keep it on you. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I present to you Mr. Kent Spong. Oh. There you go. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> and the Yamaha CS80. Come on, come on, CS80. Huge cord. Ready? You need to turn it up. Hey! <laughs> Foot pedal. I tell you what, there's one thing I used to do when customers used to, uh, when I do the, the KSRs on them, and um, I have them set up in, in the front room ready for them to test before they take them. And I literally do this. So I go, I said, there you go, it's all working. Try it. Just play a big chord on it. And they go, oh, lovely. And they go. <laughs> CS80 summons dogs. Yeah, I was going to say, they've all come in for a look. £80,000 worth of synth? No. no. I don't know. It sounded pretty good then, you know. We, okay. we have a question from a <laughs> um, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller, Mr <laughs> Richard Hilton. Oh. <laughs> does the CS80 come with a built-in reverb? Asking for a friend. <laughs> of course it does. <clears throat> <clears throat> But you yes. see, you, you can't you can't play CS80 without reverb, honestly. Um, no. Because, well, do you want to hear it without reverb? Do you want to spoil many people's dreams? Well, Go on, then. Stop them going out and spending stupid yes. amounts of money, won't it? Well, somebody did say um, in response to that programming uh, that programmer clip, um, mm. all of that to uh, control something or to make something. Tune something uh, that you know, that actually sounds kind of rubbish in its basic form. Mm. I don't know if I explained that <laughs> very well indeed, but you know what I mean. Yeah, but you see, there's, there's a thing um, that I do when I tune an 80 that a computer isn't going to do, and that is <clears> when you tune the 80, you want it very, very tight at the top, but you want it more fluffy. Flabby down the bottom <laughs> and I, I put that in ah, um, okay because so if actually... it's too tight it gets very it loses all its power down the bottom yeah. Yeah. a lot okay. of its power now the computer is going to rob them of that bottom end mm. so yeah well, that's, that's interesting yeah unless, unless he's done something with the algorithm that yeah I was going to say unless he's done that yeah yeah so but don't um, them. You know, CS80 oh. came out in, oh steady C CS80 came out in 1976. <laughs> Six. Six, right. Yeah. So in 2022, we, we now have a synthesizer that you yourself says does a pretty damn good impression of a CS80. And you have one of the first... Uh, <laughs> Yes, that's what we want to hear, <laughs> and that's that's it without anything on, yeah. That's without anything on. Still yeah. sounded good when you brought that that modulator yeah, in. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, the source is there, isn't it? But it yeah. just needs. I thing. mean, really, I mean, the, the presets themselves don't stand up very well without um, some sort of, should we say, larger than room reverb on it. Mm. Um, <laughs> but when you're when you're playing with the front panel, you start making weird sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's very good. So you've got one of the first hydrosynth deluxe in the UK. Have I? Must be. Got to, it's got to be. 
Um, okay. And there it is. Uh, let me just bring it. Oh, see, modern yeah. technology, we can do this. <gasps> wow. Oh, no, I so there it is. That, good. <laughs> there is your Hydrosynth Deluxe um, mm. with its lovely. I, I wish I had a synth that had a sleep mode that did flashy lights. My my Poly Brute does that, but it does it like like traffic lights. It's got four RAM buttons and it just goes up and down. That's it. Oh, right. Um, so give us a little noodle on the Hydrosynth Deluxe. Okay, then. Right, here we go. See what we've got. Yes. <laughs> now, let's see if I can suddenly nip over to the 80, pick the wrong one, and then do the same thing. You can hear that Yes. a certain degree of how similar or not similar it is. It's, 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 it's in the same postcode, isn't it? It's not far off, yeah. yeah. In fact, it's, in, it's on the same street, you know, in the same cul-de-sac. It's, it's clearly a, a strong nod to the CSAT without having to look like one. It's its own instrument as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I, I am hugely envious uh, right now. <laughs> yeah. Because it does sound... I mean, I. it's not that I wasn't convinced by the Hydrosynth. It's just I never spent time with one. So, you know... But every time I hear somebody play it... Yeah, because you were doing that earlier on, weren't you, today? That's glorious. It's very powerful. It can do all kinds. Uh, and the Deluxe has two, two, uh, engines. two engines, doesn't it's it? Two so. engines, yeah. So mm. you double up your engines. And it also has two stereo outs, so you can split the engines oh, into right. yeah. wherever you want. Yeah. And it does polychain. Um, Have you so actually tried that with your yeah, 49? Yeah, briefly, but the, the, the cables <coughs> it kept breaking. <laughs> um, but it did, and I managed to, <coughs> oh yeah, 32 voices, cool. And is it just polychain over regular MIDI, yeah? Over the, over the regular mini, yeah, uh, MIDI. You know what you want then, don't you? You want some of these? Well, this is it. This is what this studio is now screaming out for because it's just cables yeah. running in yeah, and yeah. all over the place now because I keep messing around with it. Yeah. So, yeah, so she's a beautiful girl. Um, highly recommend her. Andy highly Brooks wants to know, does it um, do a CP70 kind of sound? Possibly. There's it's so many a, sounds in it. Yeah. I, it's, got to, it? it's got just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patches. Yeah. You know, so anything's yeah. Random. Unfortunately, uh, Ken Pierce has, seems to have left because um, he'd be able to pass that, I'm sure. It's disgustingly good, isn't it? That clicking sound when you're turning the knob, is that an... That, that's actual, the actual physics yeah. of the that's knob That's the itself. physical knob. Click, yeah, click, yeah. Click, that's click, nice. Yeah. Oh, apparently, according to, uh, according, according to Gert, um, not that Gert, the another Gert, um, the uh -huh. CP80 by Roger, Roger Orsteely, Orsteely, I think, in the Hydrosynth face, Facebook group. So, yeah, it clearly uh, does there. Does he know what Super. the patch number is? <laughs> Well, I, I think that might be a custom patch, but I mean, certainly yeah, it's, it's doable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's great, that strip, isn't it? Yeah. It 
It is disgustingly good. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to actually getting down to sit down and play yeah. this, the, the, the living crap out of this. Yeah. Doctor Mike was saying in the uh, in the chat that it's got the two engines, but the all the controls light up different colours for the yeah. upper yeah. engine and the lower yeah, and engine. The, they've got the thing where they got um, the uh, there's patch groups as well, so you'll have the the blue patch. So when you get a blue patch, ah, oh, there's one of you know yeah. whatever the, yeah. the grouping is. Yeah, yeah. So, as a previous Hydrosynth user, coming to the interface of this is just like, is it like for like? Do you have to learn yeah. anything new? No, no, you don't. And the one thing I really, really like about the way this is laid out is, you know, you know when you get these synths like um, a JX3P, for instance, mm -hmm. where you have the one slider doing everything. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But because you've got, oh, there's the filter, there's the resonance. There's a button yeah. for that. There's a button for that. There's a button for that. You know, yeah. there's plenty yeah. of controls to work with. And the way the LFOs are laid out, mm. and you've got the five LFOs, but they flash at the rates that they're at. So mm -hmm. if there's a very fast LFO you can hear, you go, well, when that's slower, you can look at the button and it tells you which LFO it is that you need to press and adjust. Mm. Brilliant. What's the CSA yeah. you got? It hasn't got that. <laughs> <laughs> it has one LFO, and that's your luck. Mm. No more. Sorry, go away. Yes, yes so. very nice. No, I'm seriously, as I said to you earlier on, Ken. Mm. There, there are two things that stop me. Getting, first of all, it's is not knowing how much fundage I've got and wanting a couple of other things as well. So, I'm, I'm in the market and I'm thinking either Isla Instruments S2400, Profit Ten, or one of these. Now I know that the Profit Ten is you know certainly up there, top end of the price. Would I? You know, I mean, I've got a, a poly brute. Does that cover my analog thing? I've always wanted a profit, but this is just every time I hear it, I think, well, mm, this has got to be the one. This won't help then. Go on then. When you uh, USB MIDI it into, the, into your computer mm -hmm. and you call up the Oberheim uh, OBE software, yeah. you can then configure it to do various things with the polyphonic aftertouch and the ribbon controller. Mm -hmm. And the patch that was like already good, it becomes holy crap. <laughs> yeah, because the MPE, yeah, the MPE is going to make yeah. a massive difference to that. Yeah. yeah. So the hydrosynth transmits MPE. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. So that that's interesting because I've got the cobalt and the argon which receive it, yeah. but I've never been able to mess around with it because I don't have anything that transmits MPE. Yeah. So that would be interesting. Yeah, but the it's, other it's, problem is mm. where the flipping heck do I put it? Oh, mate, tell me about it. I'm looking at my yeah. um, Jaspers going, um, I want the two Hydras together. And I'm going, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Because that's a full rack. I've seen it. So, Because yeah. Ty's trying to get me to buy a, a, a Kurtz file 2700 now. <laughs> Jeez. And I'm going, yeah. Because oh, he, he oh. got his delivered today, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. 12, yeah. It was 24 hours between going, do you know what? I'm going to buy one and pushing it. And it turned <laughs> up at the door. Up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. I'm going to have to have a word with Glenn, I think. And, but uh, I tell you what he did tell me today. He said um, he's got this piece of software called, I think it's Convert All or something like that. And it's able, he said, with the Kurtzwell, he said, I can now um, load uh, my spitfire audio libraries into the kurtz file really he'll have to configure the w where they yeah. go but he's a smart cookie he knows about the you know the ranges yeah. of all the different instruments so he can he can put these libraries in because it's 32 no i think he said it was more than that it was massive massive memory in it yeah massive Jeez. and i've just been reminded by um by our friend matt evans um but he's got DX7 Mark One with my name, which I have um, said that I will have off of him. So I've got that to take into account. Oh yes, yes. not just uh. again, not just because of the money, um, but there's bloody space to put it. I mean, I, I think I showed this on your show, Kent. But I didn't show it on this. I picked this Go on. up the other week. Oh, I can't pick it up now. It's so freaking heavy. Yeah, it's a, but the, it's a two under that one, Rob. It is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I found one of these. <coughs> A couple of hundred on eBay, and it's in immaculate condition, and it that works. Looks, that looks great. It looks new. Along with uh, 
Where's my... I can't it's get used to side. That's it. Fully operational, five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Um, Could you swap that out? I can, yes. There, there is yes. a GoTech version of it, um, mm. which I guess eventually this is going to have to have. But um, I want, I like to keep things as original as possible. What I want, I didn't realise it actually has a music stand that goes with it, yeah. but it didn't come with it. So you got the holes there. So I'd love to find one of those. The only downside of this was that it's an American one, so it has to have. I've got a drop down thing, but that's about it. But yeah, it's um, it's I reckon, lovely. I reckon it's, somebody who is good with the electronics would be able to change that to a UK thing. Apparently, like there are, if you could find one. Yeah. Apparently, mm. you can on certain models, but not on others. And I don't know what the difference is. I'm just going on what I've been told. <laughs> oh, mm. Sorry. Yeah, when you sent um, me a photograph of that, I didn't realise that it was, you know, I imagined, you know, sort of a plasticky sort of... No, it's all... Everything they did then was metal. Yeah. And weighted. It, the the bases are solid wood and stuff. But the, the other thing is, I mean, <laughs> you can see that I've got the O2R down there that's never made it up onto a desk because I just don't have the space in this room at the moment. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I need to do some um, reconfiguration. So, what? What is that word? Do we, I don't understand the question, I'm sorry. No, no, no I, I, I don't understand that word. What was it? No. <laughs> um, yeah, so I need to sort of think about stuff. Maybe getting rid of a child or two. Um, because, you know, what with the DX1? That was that took me ages to persuade her to let me put that in the house. Mm. Um, so, well, yes. The owner, bless her, actually paid for this. Nice. Which was we like nice partners thing. like that, don't we? Yeah, we do, we do, we do. Yeah. So I have to do the washing up for three years, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. So, yes, yeah, there's lots of good things. But, no, that's that's great. Um, nice little demo of the Hydrosynth Deluxe, and you've um, tiny, clearly tiny inspired um, gear lust in, in most of the people that's watching this show. Mm. Um, but yeah, there you go. I think that's all of our topics. I think we, we've got a show. Um Anything else you guys wanted to add? No, no I've got a pizza at half past, so... Oh, right, yeah, well, we'll yeah. get you. I've got a bottle of wine downstairs. <laughs> um, and I'm just, I'm just, I've been trying to keep tabs on my football team because um, we're playing... You remember John um, John Bickle from Modal? Mm. Yeah. So he's a Southampton fan, and we're playing Southampton, and this is my team, Norwich, and we were one ah. nil down. Um, must be coming up to full time soon. Oh, I don't know. Never mind. Um... So yeah, I've got to go downstairs and check the scores. But uh, what a show! I mean, Dave Spears, if you if you have joined us late, um, where the bloody hell were you? But the beauty of the internet means that you can stop this when it's finished and go back and watch the first hour or so uh, with this brilliant conversation with the the wonderful Dave Spears, who is always uh, great value for money, talking about OBE and Tom Oberheim and all of that stuff. Um, so that was really cool. So please do go back and and have a watch of that. Um, we've got some great guests coming up on the show. I'm just going to read them off of my little list here. Um, so next week is show 100. <gasps> and we've not really done it. We've not planned anything. I and mean, we've got a great guest and a great co-host. So next week we've got Dave Bryce on the show. Uh, Dave works for people like Cloud Microphones. Thank you. Um, Cloud Microphones and uh, Reverb Foundry. And he's a great musician. Mm. And our guest host next week is going to be Dr. Mike Metley because um, he knows Dave very well. So we thought we'd get him on to do that. Um, okay. So okay, it's 100. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, you're more than welcome to join. Um, 100th show, though. So that that would be fun. We, we need mm. to do something to celebrate somehow. Would there we'll be cake? To- yeah, yeah, maybe we'll do some cake. We get some maybe cake, we'll, yeah. Got to be some, cake, yeah. yeah. Do, uh, you can get these custom cupcake things. Maybe we should maybe we should order a custom cupcake and have it sent to each of us, and then we can have our own. I'll have to look into that. Um, I was thinking so, yeah. bigger than big cake. Uh, well, yes, but, I mean, we all we need a piece. And it's, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be booze? Oh, that's an idea, isn't it? That well, could be. I live with piano, of course there will be. Yes. Mm. Mm. Um what else have we got so Dan Goldstein from Cherry Audio uh, March 11th Starsky Carr March the 18th Eric Norlander um, the great Eric Norlander on March yeah. 25th and then April kicks off with an absolute cracker Gaz Williams and then we've got mm. Kelly Marie we've got Tara Bush from I Speak Machine if you are in America 
and you do like a bit of Gary Newman, Tara Bush as I Speak Machine is opening for Gary Newman every night. She was there. Where are they? They're at Joshua Tree tonight. Uh, last night they were at the Fillmore in San Francisco. The night before they were at the Fonda Theatre in uh, LA. And they're doing, uh, Gary's doing an American tour, and uh, Tara and Math are opening up for, uh, well, I say Tara's doing most of it, and Math just helps set it up. And uh, she's coming on the show because she's got a new album uh, coming out April 22nd. It's called War. Um, it's utterly brilliant. Um, lots of electronics on there and she recorded that all at her home studio in LA so we got her to come to talk to that and then talking of new album releases we've got um, our big friend Michael Wayne I say big I mean big as in he's a friendly friendly big not physically big you know yeah, I'm yeah. digging my hole um, he's coming on April 22nd uh, there you go um, so Michael is launching his new album uh, on that day and he's going to be playing a launch gig at the uh, Emmy app uh, in Philadelphia, which is the big museum of electronic music, mm. and he is he's hoping to be able to give us a performance live from the venue before he does the real performance. So we're going to have that on the show, and we're going to be talking to him. Wow. And maybe, depending on internet connections, he might be able to take us around the place and um, and show us some of the exhibits, which would be rather nice. Nice. Wow. Um, so yeah, Michael's coming on April twenty second, and then April twenty ninth. Uh, we haven't got any there. We've got Andrew Longhurst um, coming in in May, along with Jim Danica. Um, Jim has just released DX Dreams for Contact. So if you're a Contact user, you can now have access to all of those wonderful 80s uh, sounds. And there's going to be more stuff coming on uh, on that platform. And he's also signed a new uh, kind of distribution and support deal so that he can kind of put all of that to, to one side and they're going to be doing all the marketing and everything and he can just concentrate on making some new sounds. Lots of stuff in the pipeline. Uh, Sheffield's finest, Elliot Kennedy, who just the other day um, opened the Sheffield Steelers ice hockey game uh, by singing the national anthem, but he has himself written uh, many, many hit records and he's a bit of a synth nerd and um, he's coming on the show in uh, June. Mm. So yeah, lots of lots of good stuff coming along. So, um, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure as always. Yeah. Much lined up for the weekend, either of you. Um, sleep. Yeah, Kent needs yes, sleep. Yes, you, you need sleep. I think he's like yeah. thirty-six hours or something without like, sleep now. Yeah, I think. Yeah. It was, like, was it five o'clock that podcast? <laughs> Officially, well, I left at two. Yeah. Yeah, you left at two, and then it had a lockdown. <laughs> lock in, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a lock in, yeah. It was all like, and we just talked about all sorts of stuff, and it was just what went on and on. And I literally had to go, Look, I've really got to go to sleep now, guys. Because I did like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> And I was so tired, I couldn't get to sleep. So get some rest. Oh, yeah, get I'll some be, rest. Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Are you gigging this weekend, Ben? Uh, not this weekend, no. Right. Uh, been working on uh, vocals with, with the band. Oh, been, yes. Uh, doing some stuff on the album that was we're, we're trying to get out, so we had, we had a get together in the week and it went really well. So uh, a couple more sessions like that, we should have something ready to put out there. Like so, nice. It's coming all right. I hate doing vocals, so it was great having them round. I let them yeah. do it all, and I just sat here <laughs> at the back of the room, looking important. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Um, I'm. I, the power supply of the DX1 is being repaired as we speak, tested and repaired. Um, oh, I found excellent. the cover. Oh, excellent. We'll have to sort out getting that. Brilliant. Mm. So I won't be doing anything really. I might actually sit here and make some music. That might be Steady. interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 Play that OBE. Or, or figure out where I'm going to put the QX1. Because what I might do, you see, is mm. at the top there I've got um, a couple of those small modules. Mm. And I might relegate those because I don't tend to use them that much Are they I need a hair drum machine uh, TX7 and an RX17 yeah and I, yeah. I don't really use them so I thought well maybe I'll just shift them away move everything up and put the QX1 next to the DX7 so mm. we shall see um, but yeah it's just kind of twiddling thumbs and uh, mm, there you go listen nice. it's been it's I, I kind of feel a bit down now because we had such a great guest mm. and um Loving that hydrocyte, really, 
I just I'm going to go off and just watch videos of that now. And I got a hydrocin. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> hydrocins. <laughs> um, and but if I, you we got IBE, mate. Yeah, we got IBE. No, no plug-in under a hundred pounds. You'd have a reverb on it like that. No, it's, no, it's, no. It's, it's, wow, incredible. It's, yeah, yeah. It's it's the first thing I noticed when I opened her up, and it was like, yeah. oh, oh, the tail on that. I know it's mm. very nice. Yeah, so I might have a play around with that. Um, which, of course, if you want to hear OBE in action, just listen to our intro music and our outro music. Cause it's on both. Um, yeah. So there you go. Um, we'll be back same time, same place next week with Dave Bryce, uh, Doctor Mike Metley. Um, and maybe even Kent, and maybe maybe we'll just do like a little open thing. Maybe people can come in and, and help us celebrate 100 shows. I don't know. We'll think of something. We'll think of cake. something. Right. Cake, just, cake, cake and booze. Top of the list. Cake, cake and booze. booze. Guests. Hmm. That's what we'll do. Done Brilliant. <laughs> right here. Okay. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Take the greatest of care. To everyone that's in the chat, thank you so much. Thank you also to everyone that's donated. I, I, Chris, I know you're still there. I forgot to mention you. Thank you very much for your donation. It is greatly appreciated. And it's always great to have you on board. If you don't know who Chris Blythe is, Chris is a lovely Scottish chap that lives out in LA at the moment. But he used to live in Kenya and now, but he's also a big fair like nut like me. And he's got a couple, mm. um, but he's building one from scratch using parts that he's you know actual genuine fair like parts but he's uh, he's building it and uh he's got that on his own channel but also he's now doing it for Sintor in texas so you can go and check that out on, on right. their channel but do go and, and check that because mm. it is very fascinating stuff i'm going to uh, the shed because i think i've got a voice card for one. Oh well let me have that <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But always before I forget, I always tend to forget this one. So please don't forget to go and watch Ranz's show, 2 p.m. UK time tomorrow. On Sunday, you've got Jamie at 6 p.m. UK. Then you've got Dom at 7 p.m. UK. Um, and then what's next? It'll be Nick the following Wednesday at 4 p.m. UK. Uh, maybe Gaz at 8 p.m. He normally does some stuff. And then this man down below... Um, if he's not asleep, he does something on a Thursday evening, which is not really you know, music related. It's just like minded individuals. It's not sitting. even a show. It's not even a show. It's a soiree. It's a gathering. Yeah, it's it's, just an it's, open it's, window. Indeed. So, yeah, <laughs> lots of things to do online in these uh, these troubled times. And uh, yeah, mm. stay safe, everyone. Don't forget, go and buy some stuff from Sign Vibes and go and support our friend in the Ukraine. Um, take the greatest of care. Have a fantastic weekend. We will see you same time, same place next week. From us, it's a very good night. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Ah, we've not ended yet. We've not ended yet. Oh, no. <laughs>